Okay, Mr. Sturmer, uh, we were on your witnesses. Um, I had a, a placement and Ms. Jordan testified. So call your next witness, please. I'll go ahead and call Taylor Velasquez. Okay, she's here. And you're the case for the department, is that correct? Yes. Um, at the last hearing, uh, the court made several orders, um, are, are not really the last hearing, but whenever we recess the trial to today's date, the court made several orders. Um, do you happen to have those orders in front of you at this time? I do not have them, but I can get them in front of me. Okay. Well, as far as you know, have the parents complied with the orders that were made by the court? They were supposed to start therapy a lot sooner, but there was a lot of conflict of scheduling on Ms. Jordan and the parents' part, but I do believe they have started and they've had two sessions. But otherwise, I believe they have been compliant with those orders. Okay. Okay. And just to, to get into the, to the ARD stuff, have they attended the ARD meetings? Yes. And what's going on with all of that right now? Uh, Michael was recommended for further testing to determine whether he's going to be placed in a regular classroom or not. And he was. And so we had that follow-up meeting, um, I believe it was last week, to go over his results and his placement. Okay. And so have you discussed with the parents the steps moving forward and, and what all this means? Um, when I met with them after the ARD, I didn't realize that Dr. Chapman had to rush off to work. And that was on Thursday. So I did not get to go over the most recent ARD with them. Okay. Prior to that, though, have y'all been discussing the results of those meetings? Yes, they said they had no questions. Okay. Did they seem that to, to indicate that they understood what was being required and, and expected? Uh, they said they did. Okay. Um, well, I just want to get into the the your role in the case um, as the conservatorship caseworker. Uh, at the beginning of this case, uh, can you give your impression of, of Michael whenever you first got on board as the caseworker? Yeah, so Michael, he was three at the time. Um, he was very, I think, misunderstood. He just was uh, very hyper. He would run around. He was not very easily consolable. Um, he had a very, very small diet. He would only eat chicken nuggets and yogurt. Um, and he did not follow direction very well. Um, he did not have a routine, and he was not potty trained. Okay. And the Michael that you know now, uh, how old is he? He's five. Five, so we're talking of, of almost a two-year time span. Um, and what kind of progress have you seen him make since you've been the caseworker? He's made incredible progress. Um, he has a very healthy routine now. Um, he's nearly potty trained. He still needs a little bit of help, but he's able to go on his own, whereas beforehand you couldn't even get him to sit on the toilet. Um, he eats a lot more than he originally started. He'll eat basically anything you give to him. Sometimes you need to adjust it a little bit, but um, he will eat a lot of food now and he's doing well in school. He is very smart. He's always been very smart, but he's been able to um, respond a little bit more during conversation. He still doesn't quite converse, but you can get some responses out of him. And he has a vocabulary probably just as large as yours and mine. He can say so many words and he repeats almost everything that he says. And um, he's just doing really well. He seems comfortable. Um, and even though he can't quite communicate necessarily with verbally, he's able to communicate his needs to his caregiver, um, which beforehand he was not able to do. Okay. Now, over a, a two-year time span or nearly two-year time span, especially at the age from three to five, some of the progress that he made, you would attribute that to just getting a little bit older, right? Yeah, yeah. But in your opinion, is it the environment that he's in that's caused him to make such a great uh, leap in all of these areas of his life? Objection, speculation. Okay. Uh, we'll move on, Judge. Uh, tell us about the caregiver, uh, Miss Debbie Rag. Yeah, Miss Rag. Um, she stepped in when she heard that the parents needed somewhere for Michael to go, and since then she has provided anything and everything to him. She includes him in her family functions as her own. Um, she made sure that he was in school and doing well in school. She communicates with the teachers regularly. Um, she helped him establish a routine. She was able to start him potty training and get him comfortable using the bathroom. Um, she was able to introduce him to all these new foods that he's eating, and she's also helping him socialize. Um, they go to church, and he did used to do Boy Scouts and things like that, and just really integrated him into her family. So what what differences between uh, Miss Rag and the parents um, as far as, you know, discipline and routine? What are the differences you see in their parenting styles? Miss Rag is very straightforward with Michael when he needs to stop or when he needs to be redirected to do something else, whereas the parents... Um, I observe them more just following him around and making sure he's safe, but not really redirecting any behavior. Um, for example, like turning on off light switches, allowing him to go 
places that may isn't desired instead of redirecting it they'll just they watch him um, whereas Miss Rag lets him know like hey you're not allowed in there um, or come back in here let's sit down this is what we're doing. Have you personally observed um, any regression uh, in Michael after visits with his parents? I have not personally observed it no. Okay so that was kind of discussed with Miss Rag and she yes that in her testimony. Um, well I don't want to just go through all the parents' services. It's all in the in the court report. Um, but at this time, Judge, I would like to offer the uh, the final report that was uh, filed by the department. Uh, did they update it from two months ago, Mr. Starmer? Uh, I don't believe so, Judge. Why not? There hasn't been much change, ma'am. Any objections? No objections. No objection. Um, to object to the age of the report, Judge. I believe what should have been repaired by or prepared by yeah. their by their 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 policies and procedures. I believe it's within forty five days. I, but uh, uh, you know, saying I've got a final report, we might as well file one at the beginning of each case. That way, we don't have to prepare one at the end using this timeline. <laughs> Um, I'm going to admit it. I'm going to overrule Mr. Glass's objection. I'm going to, I'm going to admit it, but I, I, Mr. Glass, I agree with everything he said for once. So, yeah, no, I mean, and, and Mr. Glass, um, you know, if, if it's, if it's stale or old, you know, be sure and ask questions about it. This goes back to what I was talking about in the breakout room, but keep going, Mr. Sturmer. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Velasquez, as far as the parents' progress and services, is there anything different about their progress and services that's not included in the court report? Uh, no. Okay. So they're no longer participating in therapy? I'm sorry. I take that back. They have started therapy. Uh, they had two sessions since uh, it was ordered at the last hearing, um, but nothing has really begun because of only having those two sessions. And remind me, what kind of therapy is this? It's uh, supposed to be marriage and or mar marriage and family counseling with Ms. Jordan. Okay, so they're not attending individual therapy at this time. No, they had completed that already. Okay, so as far as the marriage slash family counseling goes, you haven't received any uh, progress notes or anything like that. No, Ms. Jordan did reach out to me and let me know that she had no update because they had just started with her. Okay, um, any other things on the service plan that's uh, not included in the report? No, sir. Well, since we were here last, how are the visits going? The visits seem to be going well. Um, there are no major concerns. I did observe one visit a few Saturdays ago, and um, Michael was happy. He was playing with his dad and his mom. Um, I did try to observe another visit about two Saturdays ago, but the Chapmans had not returned back from picking him up, so I didn't get to observe that one. Okay. Uh, since we were here last, have you uh, been to their home? Yes. And what's what was the home like whenever you visited last? Um, it's in the same general state. There are minor concerns for some little things that I usually point out at each of my visits, um, such as clutter on the countertops, appliances being pulled out closer. Maybe that Michael could possibly pull them down. Um, but for the most part, the house is okay. Okay. And tell me about what the home has been like, conversations y'all have had and such through the duration of the case. Okay, so when I first got on the case, the house had been dramatically cleaned up from the investigation, so I don't know how it was prior to that. However, um, there was clutter, there was tools and random items on the table. Um, Judge, objection is to that response. I believe we're getting into a narrative, and I can explain my, my objection. If Ms. Velasquez says, I don't know how the house was prior to my first visit, and then she goes to narrate how the house was before her first visit, She's not answering the question. She's being non-responsive. I was speaking about my first visit, sir. Whoa, judge, not Ms. Velasquez. I'm so sorry. There may be misunderstood who I was talking to. Mr. So Starmer, that's the basis of my objection. This thing. Ms. Starmer, just re rephrase your question. Okay, Ms. Velasquez, what was the home like the first time you visited the home? Uh, it was cluttered in some areas. There were tools and other, other random objects on the kitchen table. Um, there were some, well, a lot of clutter on the kitchen countertops food, um, utensils, things like that, some trash in the bedrooms or the, the parents' bedroom. There was a lot of clothes and other clutter, books, um, items just stacked up on the corners of the walls. Same thing in the bedroom that is now my, uh, Michael's bedroom, uh, sewing machine, baseball items, memorabilia, 
Um, the floors were not clean, like they needed to be vacuumed. Um, there's a baseball room that was very cluttered to the point where you could not open the door all of the way. Um, what else? There were some chemicals on the floor, like cleaning chemicals. Um, and the bathroom, again, the bathrooms were just untidy things all over the kitchen counters. Um, like the countertops needed to be wiped down. There's dust and hair, same thing as the floors. Okay. So after that first visit to the home, did you communicate with the parents your concerns? Yes. And what was the result of that communication? I had suggested possibly getting a cleaning service just to help them get back to a clean slate for the home, which they did not want to do. However, they did clean up bits and pieces. Like at each visit, I would go and point out a few things that I would like to be fixed and they would fix those items. But then um, on other areas of the home seemed to get more cluttered. So it was kind of like a one, one moment, one room would be cleaned and then, then it would get another room would get dirty. And then I would point out that room at the next visit and then it'd bounce around. Okay. And has that continued throughout the case or is that just that one time issue? Um, it was for a majority of the case. Okay. Um, what about the, the food in the home um, and, and their treatment of Michael's diet? Yeah. So Michael was only being fed chicken nuggets from the parents, from my understanding. Um, and they continue to feed him chicken nuggets, which is okay in um, moderation. In their freezer, they have a lot of freezer food and in their fridge, they did have some ingredients um, and leftovers and such. But as far as feeding Michael, um, my understanding is that he gets fed chicken nuggets. Okay, and I know Ms. Rag talked a little bit about some of those things that whenever she testified, but um, have the parents indicated a willingness to work on that diet? No. Okay. Have you personally seen them whenever they're offering meals to Michael? Yes. And what do they, the times that you've observed, what are they feeding him? Um, they bring chicken nuggets from home um, and feed them, feed him the chicken nuggets that they prepare at home. Okay. And have you discussed, you yes. know, switching up the diet or offering things different? Yes. And what is the response to that? Um, they usually say, okay, but I've seen no change in that. Okay. Do you have any other concerns about the parent's home? Um, not for the home, no. Okay. What other concerns do you have for the parents? I'm concerned that Michael's going to be left under just Miss Cindy's care and that she's not going to be able to keep up in supervising care for him when Dr. Chapman is at work. And why is that a problem for the mother? Um, she is using a walker at this time, so she's not able to chase around and keep up with Michael and he's very active. Have you discussed this issue with her? Yes. Does she believe that she can keep up with him? Um, I think to an extent, yes. I know that she understands that she's a little bit less mobile. Okay. Any other concerns for the parents? Um, that's the gist of it. What's the department's ultimate recommendation? Uh, for Michael to remain in Ms. Rack's care. Does the department have any recommendation as far as the parents, whether or not the parents should be allowed to have unsupervised time or overnight visits? Yes, I think they should still have some unsupervised and uh, overnight visits. Okay, so what the department's recommending would be permanent managing conservatorship to, to Ms. Rag and the parents to be named possessory conservators? Yes. Okay. I'll pass the witness. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Cummings. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Velasquez, how long have you been the caseworker on this case? I've been the caseworker since August of 2021, I believe. Have you been the only conservatorship worker assigned to this case? Uh, no, at the very beginning of the case, there was another caseworker, but it was a, I think I was assigned within at least 60 days of the removal. It was very early on. And did you develop the family plan of service for this case? I believe so, yes. And was that family plan of service filed with the court? I believe so, yes. And it was made an order of the court? Yes. And as part of your family plan of service, does it include a strengths and need assessment for both the children and the parents? Yes. And when you made this family plan of service and answered the strengths and need assessment, was all of that information true at the time that you created this? Yes. 
Did you ever update this document? Yes. Did you ever file the updated document with the court? Um, I guess not, no. Did you provide a copy to the parents or the parents' attorneys? I believe I did. Okay. For Michael, mm -hmm. little Michael, on his strength and, strength and needs assessment, if you answer no I, needs identified for the majority of the sections, actually all these sections except for one, is that about correct? I would have to look at the document again. Okay. And for the mother, Miss Cindy Miller, for resource management and basic needs, if you said there were no needs identified, is that correct? Yes. And her social support system, no needs identified? Yes. Intimate partner violence, no needs identified? Yes. Does physical health, no needs identified? Uh, yes. Cognitive abilities, no needs identified? Yes. And substance abuse or use, no needs identified? Yes. So even though you answered no needs identified on all of those sections, you later had concerns about Ms. Miller's altered mental state. Is that correct? Yes. Do you still have concerns about her mental state? I do have a few, yes. Okay. Do you remember her initial diagnosis at the time of removal? No, I do not. Okay. Would it be correct if on the family plan that you put that she was hospitalized for at the time of removal for an altered mental status of hyponatremia? Yes. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And do you guys have a medical specialist through the department that you can reach out to to ask about diagnosis? I believe so, yes. Okay. And did you do that in this case? I did. Okay. And did they tell you what hyponatremia is? Uh, I'm sure they did, and I cannot recall what it was at this time. If I told you that it was low sodium, does that ring a bell? Yes. Okay. And do you know if Ms. Miller has gotten treatment for her low sodium to bring that up? I'm not sure. Did you not follow up in obtaining medical records for the parents? I did. And uh, I had asked them if they were following up on their medical care, which was also requested. And they said yes. So at this time, to your knowledge, the mother is taking care of her medical concerns that you had? Yes. Okay. And after our hearing in March, did Mr. Chapman provide you with a, a tentative schedule of what Michael's schedule will be like whenever he comes home? Yes. And did that seem feasible, realistic to you? It did, yes. Okay. And did he provide you with information on schools that he has contacted? Yes. And did he provide you information for child care? Uh, no. So he did not provide you in that same email information on babysitters, at Oak Creek Academy summer camp, um, a nurse that he used to have that's now running a daycare and their prior babysitter? Okay, I misspoke then. Yes, he did. Okay. Did you call any of these places um, to verify the information that he told you? When I had asked him in person actually for contact information for the, the babysitter provider that he said he favored, he would not give me her information. Okay. So the email that he sent to you on April 30th that included all of us in it, it has um, names and phone numbers for all these places. Did you read the email? I didn't read that email. I, I was talking specifically about that one lady because I did follow up with some of the others. Okay, who did you follow up with? Um, Oak Creek Academy. Is that the only one you followed up with? Um, off the top of my head, I cannot remember the names. I did the phone numbers that he provided. I did call and they said basically that they would have to have um, a date for Michael to confirm whether or not he could attend. Okay. The previous order from the court was that you were to make weekly home visits with the parents. Have you done that? Yes. And did you, have you observed visitations between the parents and Michael? Yes. Okay. And how has the visitation changed since our last court hearing? Um, I have not quite observed any changes. Okay. Has the time and the amount of visits changed? Yes, they have. Okay. So how often are the, vis are the parents visiting now unsupervised? They're visiting with Michael on Saturdays for eight hours. And I believe they're still going on Wednesdays for two hours. Okay. And did you also say that you were not opposed to the parents being responsible for taking Michael to any of his medical and dental appointments? Correct. And the department's also not opposed to the parents having unsupervised overnight visits. Correct. Okay. I'll pass the witness. Mr. Glass. 
Thank you, Judge. <clears throat> good morning, Ms. Velasquez. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Well, so, yeah, Ms. Cummings went over quite a bit of this. I don't want to beat a dead horse with you, if that's okay. Sure. Um, let's go back to the diet real quick. Okay. Do you remember during the first part of this final hearing uh, that the caregiver testified that Michael has a really diverse diet consisting of waffles, bread, still likes his chicken nuggets, and yogurt? Yes. I guess, why do you keep going back to the chicken nuggets and yogurt from the removal from the affidavit? I'm just concerned that that's all Michael is being fed by his parents. Are you a nutritionist? No. Is Michael malnourished? No. Is Michael autistic? Yes. Do autistic people tend to like things that are kind of bland, like macaroni and cheese, instant potatoes, toast, things like that? Uh, you could say so. I am. So could you agree with me? Yes. And... Does Michael, just going back to that one more time, did he seem, has he ever, any of this seem malnourished? The investigator reported that he felt, or he seemed malnourished, but since my time, no. Okay. So you're having to rely on somebody else's report. So from your own personal experience, that would be a no, he's not malnourished, correct? Right. Since he's been in Ms. Rack's care, he's not seen malnourished, no. Did you see him in Chapman's care and was he malnourished in their care? No. Did you take him to a nutritionist? No. Did you have him seen by medical professionals for this malnutrition? No. Would you have had him seen by a medical professional if in fact he was malnourished? Yes. Would you have made that a part of the safety plan? Yes. Service plan, I'm sorry. Let's kind of skip ahead here so that we're not talking about chicken nuggets anymore. And let's just say that this was a termination case. You have filed paperwork for termination in this case. Is that right? I'm sorry. I cut out a little bit. Could you repeat that? It, this case, the affidavit, you didn't write because you're not, that was not your job. But the affidavit went to Mr. Sturmer and Mr. Sturmer filed a petition to terminate the parent-child relationship in this case. Is that correct? I believe so. Okay. Currently, what are the Chapmans doing or what have the Chapmans not done under, sorry, let me back up just a bit. Are you familiar with the grounds for termination under the family code? Yes. All right. What ground would you have right now to terminate the parent-child relationship? I don't believe there is a ground to terminate. So why would you, why do you think that Michael is better off with the placement than he would be with his own parents? I have not seen the parents show me or anyone else in the department that they can establish a routine for Michael, um, give him a balanced diet. And this, the level of supervision is, of course, when Dr. Chapman is, is, is there, I'm worried about when he's not there. Okay, so you're worried about Michael being poisoned by too many chicken nuggets, right? Yes. Or have, okay. And so it was his diet, and then we had, what was the second one? I'm sorry. His supervision. Supervision. So... During the, if you're worried about his supervision, why would you agree to um, allow unsupervised visitation? I'm worried about supervision when Dr. Chapman is at work, not during their unsupervised time. And you would not have that concern if there was someone there with Ms. Miller uh, when Dr. Chapman is gone, correct? Correct. To the best of your knowledge, do the Chapmans withhold food from Michael? No. 
you appear to eat every day? Yes. Pass a witness. Miss Misty. No questions. Okay, Mr. Starmer, any more questions? Uh, just one quick follow up. Uh, Ms. Velasquez, I just forgot to ask one question. Have you received any recommendations from providers for the child to be returned to the parents? No. Okay. That's all I have, Judge. Anybody else? Your Honor, I have a couple follow-ups. Okay, Ms. Cummings. Uh, Ms. Velasquez, just in response to Chuck's last question to you, is Michael currently seeing any providers that could provide a recommendation about whether or not he could return home or should return home? Are you meaning like therapy? Or yeah. Michael, Michael seeing any providers? Yeah, little Michael. Oh, uh, no, he's not seeing any providers outside of school. Okay, so there's no one available that can actually make a recommendation as far as returning to home. I guess not. Okay, and as far as your supervision concerns, while Dr. Chapman is at work, Michael's attending school now, correct? Yes. And the parents have provided you with a list of resources for care for Michael while Dr. Chapman is at work, correct? Yes. So that risk has now been alleviated. If it's implemented, yes. Okay. And being implemented, it's kind of hard for a parent to implement that when they don't have their child, correct? Correct. Okay. And then as far as the schedule that they've been unable to show you, once again, if you only have a child for a couple hours once a week, it's kind of hard to get them on a schedule and show somebody that schedule, correct? Sure. Yes. And really the only way to show you, to prove to you that they can have the child care and to have him on a schedule is for him to be returned to their home full time, correct? Yes. No further questions. Anybody else? No. Ms. Velasquez, I'm going to go over everything I put in my ruling since court last time. Okay. Uh, uh, you went over it some with Mr. Sturmer, but we're going over every single question, uh, every single thing I ordered. Okay. Uh, parents must make arrangements to attend Michael's ARD tomorrow. That was March 31st. They did attend that, correct? Yes. Yes. How many more ARDs did they have, did the school have before school's out? I guess school's out today or tomorrow or something. Yeah, there was one more and they attended also. Okay. Why did they not attend any ARDs before I ordered them to? Uh, I'm not sure. Miss Rag and I would let them know when they were occurring and they just would say, okay. So they did know when they were occurring? Yes. Okay. What did the testing that the school, or the results of Michael's testing? Um, they found that he is going to be able to be placed into a general ed classroom next year um, for first grade. Okay. Um, where was it determined that he was autistic? That was in his psychological evaluation by Dr. Dayheim, and then that was um, backed up by the ARD. Okay. And so the only services that this, this child who's autistic has is special ed services through the school district. He was previously seeing therapists and he was successfully discharged. He's five. He doesn't talk. He's in special ed. He has a bad diet. Um, he's not potty trained and nobody thought anymore to continue him in with providers. But he was, and then he was discharged. So I, I left with those recommendations. So y'all relied totally on the special ed services that school districts claim that they provide, correct? Yes. You know, I'm not fond of, of, of services the schools claim they provide. Have you heard me say that before? I have now. Yes. So Michael, who doesn't talk, has a great vocabulary, doesn't eat right, doesn't use a toilet. Uh, what's the summer plan for him? Summer school? Uh, what have y'all planned for him to do during the summer since y'all, I mean, I think y'all want out, but y'all want Ms. Rag to have Michael. What's the summer plan? Uh, well, he's not, he doesn't qualify for summer school anymore. We did ask about that, but summer school was for kids specifically struggling, um, even though he did participate last year. Um, but his plan, Ms. Rag has him on a routine. She does work with him at the home with all of his stuff, um, his speech, his potty training, everything. So that was just going to continue. Any, any day camps, vacation Bible schools, anything oh, like that? She has things, yeah, she has things tentatively planned, but she hasn't um, moved forward with it, not knowing the outcome of the case. Okay. Um, have you attended all the ARDs for Michael? Yes. Okay. Have there been anything, any other school meetings involving Michael? Not that I'm aware of, no. Did he have kindergarten graduation? Yes. Did they attend that? 
they tried to, but there was a lot of traffic. So I don't think they were able to actually be there. A lot. What was, what does that have? Y- y'all live in Coppers Cove and Colleen and Gatesville. It's not Houston or Dallas. What does traffic have to do with anything? I mean, like at the school. What does that have to do with anything? I mean, I assume, do they have a handicap permit? I, I believe so. And the schools are required to have handicap slips, right? I believe so. we were Has there. Mike had any doctor's appointments since March 30th to date? No. Okay, that's good. Miss Chapman was to obtain a psychiatric, geriatric, and physical exam evaluations with the results returned by 4-26-23. Did that occur? Uh, it's still scheduled for August, I believe. They had to reschedule due to a, their car not starting. Well, how is that going to do me any good when today's the final trial and I ordered that to all be done by 426? Correct. What about the fact that Dr. Chapman's a doctor? Couldn't that have some kind of, I mean, uh, wouldn't that have some kind of bearing on maybe people being able to get in or if your child's a CPS child, maybe somebody working to get them in quicker? Right. No. No, no, you can't talk now. So we don't have a psychiatric evaluation, correct? Correct. We don't have a geriatric evaluation. Correct. And we don't have a physical exam. Correct. CPS was to set this up by 4 5 23. That didn't happen, right? The, it was initially scheduled for the day after our last hearing, and that's when he was not able to make it. He? Who's he? Dr. Chapman was not able to take Miss Cindy. Why? Because he reported his car would not start. Okay, well, our last hearing was 5 3 23. Mm-hmm. And it was supposed to be set up by 4 5 23. That's a month. What's what's the excuse for the month time? Uh, he it is rescheduled, but he, I was informed that he couldn't get it get seen until I believe it's August and that he's on a wait list or a cancellation list. Okay, so y'all couldn't get it set up by 4 5 23. Therefore, we defaulted to the parents to have it set up by 4 10 23. Correct? Correct. Okay. Did Mr. Chapman notify you around like 4 11 23 of the providers that have been selected? Um, I'm not sure the date. I had asked him about it on one of my weekly visits. And were you given names and phone numbers of the providers that were to see Ms. Chapman? Yes. Okay. And how many providers was that? I believe it was just one provider. And was that person a one stop shop that could do a geriatric evaluation, a psychological, uh, psychiatric evaluation, and a Physical evaluation? I'm not sure. You know what kind of doctor that was? Um, I know off the top of my head, I can't remember. Okay. Did the parents sign releases for all the providers they've seen during the pendency of this case? Yes. Okay. And you got those? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Uh, did you get a uh, access to prescriptions that they've taken since 420, 20, 420 of 20, which was the beginning of this case? Yeah, I have all of their medical records. Yeah, and that includes prescriptions, correct? Yes. What about, did you get names of any in-home residential services that, that helped them with anything? Uh, I don't believe so, actually. Who cleans their house? They do. Okay. Did the parents, did they provide you a lit, written list of all providers that they've seen uh, and consulted with since 4 2020 and 20? Excuse me, yes. <laughs> okay. Did they give all this information also to Miss Angela Jordan? Um, I, I believe so. Um, they did just start their sessions, like I had mentioned previously. So I'm not sure if they given everything, but she did say that she got their medical records on a disc form. Okay, good. Um, on March 30th of 2023, I ordered the parents to continue weekly with Miss Jordan beginning next week, which has been the first week in April. Um, and so between the beginning of April, so basically two months, they've gone two times. Yes. Okay, it said on uh, on my email, it was 3.30, and CPS was to set up a weekly schedule with Ms. Jordan by uh, 5 o'clock on 3.31. Did y'all do that? We attempted to. There's a lot of schedule conflict between the parents and Ms. Jordan. And so the parents would provide Ms. Jordan medical, mental in- information she's requested in the past, and you think, you think she did receive that? Uh, I know that they got the recent medical records. I'm not sure about the mental and everything else. Okay. Well, that would be pretty important in this case, mm-hmm. wouldn't it? Yes. 
Uh, do you know if she got the records from the beginning of the case when Miss Cindy was to go, she had to go to two hospitals at the beginning for the removal? Uh, I believe, I believe that was what included on the disc that she was talking about. And that was when APS was in, involved, correct? Yes. Uh, Ms. Jordan gave some uh, recommendations in court. Uh, I think it was on 329. Did the parents follow Ms. Jordan's prior recommendations? Um, I believe so. And they were to provide a written report to her and to you about the school. That was that Oak, was that, was that Oak Creek you said? Oak Creek was one of them, yes. Okay. Oh, it was one, it was a school that Ms. Jordan recommended. Do you know which right. one she recommended? She was she was recommending Oak Creek. The only issue with that is that Michael's not potty trained, so he can't attend. Okay. Uh, what about ends home services? Miss Jordan recommended. Do you know about those? Uh, no. They they did. I mean, the Chapmans have mentioned it, but because of the situation and Michael not being in the home, they haven't implemented things yet. Well, don't they still need some services in the home, whether Michael's home or not? Yes. Okay. And what kind of services do you think they need in their home? Um, I would think maybe someone to help keep cleaning with their home, as well as someone coming to check in on Miss Cindy. Okay, kind of like home health maybe? Do they yeah. do that kind of stuff? Yeah. Okay. Um, the information on like home health care was to be provided by the Chapmans by 4-26-23. Did you get that information? No. Okay, CPS and uh, Attorney Lydon were to visit the parents home weekly. Did you do that weekly? Yes. Okay, and you made some announced and unannounced visits? Yes. Okay. When you went, were there days that, uh, some days that both parents were there or just mom or how, how was that? Yeah, sometimes it was just Miss Cindy. Um, sometimes they were both there and sometimes they weren't there. Okay. Did you take pictures? I did. Okay. Do you have those for exhibits? Um, I have them on my phone. Okay. And the Chapman's allowed access 24 seven, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. And they investigate the childcare, correct? Yes. But you just, you, nobody can make a commitment because they don't know when Mike will be enrolled, right? Correct. Okay. Did they successfully complete protective parenting? They had done that previously in their individual counseling, but if they were to redo it, no, because they've only had two sessions. When you were observing the visits, were some, were, were some of those unannounced? Yes. Anything that Ms. Jordan has recommended that's not being complied with? I don't believe so. Okay. Um, are there any rooms in the house that are still, last time you were there, that are still cluttered or have trails to them? Yes. And which rooms are those? Um, it's the front bedroom. Is, is this baseball room? He has lots of baseball um, items in there and there's there's a trail you can open door and there's a trail that gets to the closet but it's still stacked around the edges with stuff okay explain uh describe to me the bedroom that michael would be staying in the bedroom is it's clutter free it's a decent size he does have a bed against the wall um he has a table by the door with some items on it pictures a clock and then there's also a desk um that has a michael sign on it and um some baseball memorabilia, but, and some stuffed animals as well. Um, does he have his own bathroom? Uh, there's a bathroom next to that bedroom, but it's also used by Miss Cindy. Okay. So it's a, is it a three, two house? Yes. Do they rent or own? Do you know? They rent. Okay. How's the yard? Um, the yard is fair. Sometimes it's a very large yard. So, I mean, it does get overgrown as it would, but it's just, it's fine. Okay. I thought at the removal hearing, it was testified that Mr. Chapman, Dr. Chapman did like baseball or something in the backyard. Yes. What, what's it, what is, what do you mean? What is back there? Uh, he has a pitching machine, I believe, and a net, and I believe he hits baseballs back there. Okay. Do they have any pets? No. Okay. So uh, explain to me what kind of visits a parent, I mean, they're doing two, they're doing a couple hours on Wednesday, um, the eight hour visits What did, on Saturdays, what do they do? Uh, on Wednesdays, they usually just go to Lions Club Park, which is down the street from Miss Rags, um, and they'll they'll play there. And on now that they have the eight hours, it, it's changed up a little bit. I believe he, they took him to Austin for to a park one Saturday, and then brought him back home. And then they went grocery shopping another Saturday, and then brought him back home. And then they just play in the house usually. At their house or or Miss Rags' house? Miss, uh, I'm sorry, not Miss Rags, the Chapman's house. Okay. When they have him for eight hours, does he nap? No. If the 
have you talked with the Chapmans if they were to return, that Michael was to be returned to them, what their plans would be for him during the summer or during the day? Um, not about the summertime, no, just it was about the school year. Okay. Um, he, prior to him being removed, he didn't go to daycare, right? He was, he stayed at home, correct? I believe so. Okay. If he was with Miss Rag, would he stay in, would he go to daycare or would he stay home during the day in the summer? Um, he would stay home because Miss Rag is home, but she also has like camps and trips and stuff planned for the summertime. Do school district, I mean, school, yeah, school district, school zoning, I don't know what the proper word is, is now, but where Miss Rag lives versus where the Chapmans live, is it in the same elementary school area? No. Or same school district? No. Well, tell, tell me, tell me which school district everybody's in. Yeah, so right now, Michael's in um, Clean and the Chapmans live in Cove, so okay. it would be separate. Um, what are your experiences as a caseworker, and you have to be honest here, with special ed uh, services, and you know how you've already figured out how I feel about special ed services, personally and professionally. Um, what is your opinion about special ed services that are provided by each of those school districts? School districts. I've only worked with Colleen, um, honestly, with special needs, and it seems, from what I can tell, that um, they're pretty dedicated to it, it's at least the school that Michael's at. Um, he does get, it's going to be reduced now that he's going into a general education classroom, um, but he was getting a lot of hands-on time. He was in a very small classroom. Um, the teacher knows a lot about him and learned, you know, his quirks and was able to work with him um, and was working with Ms. Rag because he does, like, for example, run away. So they had, like, a special runaway protocol for Michael when he was on recess. Does he have an IEP? Yes. Does he have a behavior plan? Uh, I don't believe so because there's no behavior issues. Okay. Um, what did they say at the last R you went to? What was he going to be pulled out for uh, for special therapies and stuff for next year? Did, or do you know? Yeah, so I don't believe he's being pulled out, but he's going to have support join the classroom. Um, and it's going to be for uh, speech. I'm sorry, my computer's freezing up. Um, it's going to be for all of the main... Um, I'm sorry, my words are leaving me. Um, activities that he does throughout the day, they're gonna have aides come in and help him throughout the day versus being in a special ed, ed classroom. Um, his his problem isn't necessarily with the schoolwork. He's very smart. It's mostly his attention span and um, getting to verbalize. So they'll be spending more time with him um, on like a speech therapy versus actual classroom help, if that makes sense. Do you know, Ms. Velasquez, if either of the uh, schools have like an after school program for the, for the uh, kind of, uh, elementary school kids? Um, I'd have to look into it. Okay. You know what I'm talking about, though. Yeah, I, work. I mean, you know, some of us at work had to leave our kids there. Right. You know, like, okay. What, it, how is Michael, um, I know Mr. Dr. Chapman's big in baseball. That's great. Um, uh, so that means he doesn't sit at home on his computer all the time. That's good. How, how is Michael about dexterity, playing outside? Um, there's another word. I'm like you. I'm losing my words. Um, physical abilities, uh, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, he, he's, I mean, I wouldn't say there's any concern. Um, he's definitely, uh, I don't want to say an inside child, but he likes to play his piano. He likes to be on his tablet. He likes to write. So he doesn't seem to prefer those activities. Um, but I mean, he can throw a baseball. <laughs> okay. Is he one of those kind of kids that goes ballistic if you take his pad away from him? He can. Okay. He sleeps well? Yeah, for the most part. Okay. Anybody else have any questions, Ms. Velasquez? Ms. Cummings? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Velasquez, just to kind of go over some of the things you've just testified to, you had said that you had tried to set up therapy with Mr. Ordain right after the court hearing. That's correct? Yes. Okay. So if you sent an email on April 7th, stating that asking the client if he's been able to set it up and then further telling him that it's not your responsibility, it's the client's responsibility. Is that email correct? That email was correct, but I was in contact with Ms. Jordan asking if they had been in any contact either. After the April 7th date? No, no, prior. I was in contact with Ms. Jordan the day that I got the orders from the judge in the email. Okay, but you didn't try to schedule anything on that date? I was, I sent her an email. I didn't get a response from her that date. Okay, so why would you send an email to Mr. Chapman saying that it's his responsibility to schedule it? 
I believe that he should be trying to schedule as well, but we were all working together to try to get these scheduled. Okay. And then as far as summer plans for Michael, Dr. Chapman provided you with Oak Creek Academy summer camp information, correct? Okay, yes. Okay, and with the dates and the hours that it runs and that that's his first choice because that is a school that would actually be the, probably the best thing for Michael based on his diagnosis, correct? Correct, but Michael's not potty trained, so he can't attend. Okay, but I was, Ms. Ragged testified that Michael is potty trained. He's potty trained where he will go to the bathroom on his own, but he needs assistance wiping still. He needs to be wiped every time he goes. Okay, but he knows when he has to go to the bathroom. For the most part, he does still have accidents sometimes. Okay. I mean, kids that are five years old and autistic, do you think accidents are kind of a normal thing? Yeah. And the bulk of potty training is knowing when they need to go. Correct? Yeah. Did you contact Oak Creek Academy to see if that level of potty training was sufficient? I did. And they said that it would, they'd have to um, observe. They can't make any decisions over the phone like that. Okay. So that's not a, he can't go. They'd have to observe him to determine specifically. Right. But they didn't tell you, no, he cannot go there. They said that he has to be potty trained and they would have to observe it. Okay. And as far as the extended visits with the parents that they're getting right now, the eight hours, do you have any sort of a safety plan in place saying that Michael cannot be left alone with his mother? No. No further questions. Anybody else? Just a uh, <clears throat> couple judge if uh, Ms. Cummings didn't cover it. So Ms. Velasquez, uh, Michael ever injured at the Chapman's home? Not that I'm aware of, no. And uh, the potty training issue, is that just with the Chapman's or is that continued? That sounds like it's continued a little bit. Is that right? Yes, it's continued. So it's not just on the, the when during the removal when he was three, it's not just on the Chapman's. You see what I'm saying? Correct. Yeah, he's he's still struggling with potty training. And he's been in Miss Rag's care for quite some time, right? Yes. That's the witness. Anybody else? Ms. Ms. Velasquez, do you know uh, Dr. Chapman's hours at his clinic or where he works? I have a general idea, yes. Tell me what they are. Um, I believe that he works Mondays, full day, Tuesday, full day, Wednesday, he's home in the afternoon, Thursday afternoon, and Friday, I believe he's working a full day. Uh, what about weekends? He does not work weekends, to my knowledge. Is he ever on call? I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, what does Mrs. Chapman do during the day? Um, she's at home. Who runs errands, grocery shops, stuff like that? They do together, I believe, or Dr. Chapman. How many cars do they have? They have two. I'm not sure if one runs. Can she drive? Um, she was for a little bit, but not on her own. She needs Dr. Chapman with her. Okay. At the adversary hearing in this case, there was some discussion about nobody having access at the home to phones. What's up with, are they were not charged or didn't work or I don't know, what, do they have phones? They both have phones. Okay. Um, has uh, the, at the adversary hearing, I don't, uh, you weren't, I don't believe you were there listening at the adversary hearing. There was testimony about um, Mrs. Chapman not eating well either. Um, do you know anything about her eating or eating a bunch of ice cream or anything like that? Um, I believe it was mentioned by her therapist, but it seems that she has been eating better. She's made comments to me about trying to eat healthier. And that the eating was affecting her cognitive abilities. I'm sorry, I cut out a little bit. It, her, her bad diet was affecting her cognitive abilities. Do you know anything about that? Uh, I do not. Um, have you looked in the refrigerator and see what's in the refrigerator in the pantry? Yes. How does it look? Um, there's a lot of leftovers. The last time I checked was about two weeks ago, I believe. So there's McDonald's leftovers, um, lots of leftovers and like packages where you couldn't see what it was in. So I'm not sure what they were. Um, and they're in the freezer. There's a lot of um, chicken nuggets and freezer food. And there's also um, plastic bags. I'm not sure what was in the plastic bags. Who cooks? Miss Cindy, I believe for the most part. She cook or does she warm up stuff out of the, the freezer food as you called it? Um, I think she does cook a little bit. She's uh, 
not recently, but I would go and she would be cooking chicken and some vegetables, chicken and onions. Chicken nuggets or chicken chicken? Uh, she would make chicken chicken, chicken breast. Okay. Um, do, when you've been at the house, has she been out of her uh, lazy boy or the chair that she that was testified to a bunch at the removal hearing? Yeah, she'll get up and walk around while I'm there. Okay. Phones work? Yes. Said, do they have um, smoke alarms in the house? Yes. Any uh, like pools or anything like that? Trampoline that would be a hazard for a young guy? Um, not, no, I don't believe so. Okay. Do they live in a neighborhood or out in the country? They live in a neighborhood, but um, there's still a lot of land in the back. But they have neighbors. Yes, they have neighbors. Uh, I have one more question for Ms. Uh, Ms. Velasquez. I found it in my notes when we were at a break. You ready, Ms. Greenwald? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Velasquez, does uh, Michael wear a pull-up to, to school? No, he just recently started wearing underwear. Okay. So, okay. That's good. Does he wear, what does he wear, pull-ups at night? Yes, or he, wears, he wears them at night. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. That's it. Anybody else? Okay. I think I said, uh, no, I said next witness and we took a break. Mr. Sturmer, next witness. I don't have any other witnesses, Judge. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Cummings, any witnesses? No witnesses, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Mr. Glass? Uh, call my client. Okay. He's been sworn. Uh, so let's go through a couple of things. First thing I want to touch on is uh, these ARD meetings. When did you become aware that Michael was going to get a, a what we call an ARD meeting or an ARD uh, review? Um, it was the, the either one in April. I don't know when it was exactly, but the last two. What about? The last two are the I'm only sorry. ones I knew about. Well, you just heard Ms. Velasquez testify that you knew about all of these ARD meetings. Oh, I did not. I didn't, know what, didn't even know what one was. Did, do you recall? Uh, Ms. Rag, during the last hearing, testify that you had not been told about the ARD meetings? I think I do, yeah. So Ms. Rag said that she had not informed you about the ARD meetings and that you didn't know about them, right? Correct. Right. And did Ms. Velasquez ever test, did I, Ms. Velasquez ever notify you about any of the other ARD meetings? No. So you went to this ARD meeting that the judge ordered you to go to. Uh, now that was, I believe, re originally that was rescheduled so that the school district could have an attorney there. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Was the school district's attorney present when you all went to the meeting? He was present by uh, Zoom. Okay. What was discussed during that meeting? Just the structure of arts and what they were going to try to accomplish later on. Do you have any difficulty with uh, making further art meetings and making sure that Michael gets the the things that he needs for his education? No, I can uh, No, I, what? I didn't understand it. I can make all, all of the future meetings. Okay. Tell me a little bit about uh, your wife's health. How's she doing mentally? Mentally, she's doing pretty well. Um, she's had some ambulatory difficulties, but mentally she's right there. Can you hire someone, be that Ms. Rag or someone else, a third party to come in uh, during the times of Michael that y'all may need help with Michael when you're not there? Yes, absolutely. I've got multiple people lined up. You've provided those names to Ms. Velasquez? Yes, I have. Um, you don't have that person hired currently because Michael's not there when you're not there, right? That's correct, yes. What about this Oak Creek School? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, I, we went. I went there and I like the fact that the classes look very small and it looks like everybody gets in almost individual attention and, uh, and they took me around it looked like all the kids were doing something something different and seemed to be having a pretty good time and i didn't see anybody anything that looked disrupted or anything else it looked like a much better environment than the public school for, for my what, where is oak ridge oh, hold on, hold on. Class. this dr chapman's cutting out kind of Fading away. I don't know if he's moving the mic when he, you know, gets done test testifying like we probably all would. But I, I'm. We need to make sure he goes consistent the whole way. Okay. How, how's the the volume right now? It's fine. Okay. Ms. Greenwald, are you, is your volume with Dr. Chapman okay? He's fading, like you're saying at the end. Of, just make sure you speak loudly the whole uh, statement, Ms. Dr. Chapman. Okay. The, so what was the question again? Oh, where where is Oak Creek? It's on um, Tremier. 
uh, <clears throat> north of the, the 14. How would transportation to and from Oak Creek, how would you work that? Well, I could take them there myself because they have a four school program and uh, they also have an after school program. So I could pick him up after work. It's not that far from Fort Hood or Fort Cavazos. And, uh, Since we're talking about transportation, um, what's what's going on with y'all's vehicles? Any issues there? Yeah, the um, on my car, the big when we use every so often the battery cables come loose, and I can fix that, but it isn't instantaneous, and it may take cost me fifteen or twenty minutes late to something. Um, the other car has a dead battery, and I can't get the battery out without somebody jumping it because the lock is electronic, and so I can't get into the trunk to get the battery. What happened with uh, y'all attending? Michael's graduation. We were there. We no Wait, what? You were there? We were there. There's no problem. There at the graduation? Yes. At the school? At the yeah. school, yes. What? During the graduation. Pardon me? During the graduation? During the graduation. Yeah, we were escorted in by one of his teachers. Well, you just heard Ms. Velasquez testify that y'all were lazy and that you didn't make it. No, not true at all. No problems with, with, with traffic? No, well, we had to park a ways away, or I had to park a ways away, but no, no trouble with traffic at all. I thought traffic was a problem. No, traffic wasn't a problem. Were you stuck in traffic? No, we weren't stuck in traffic. Did you see any traffic in Copper's Cove or Colleen? Not any more than usual. Were you late? No, we were early. <laughs> How late were you? Uh, minus 30 minutes. So you're saying you got there on time? You even got there early? We got there early, yes. Did, did you see Michael graduate? Yes, we saw him graduate. They called his name out. Um, we couldn't see him before that. So I went, when they called his name out, I stood up so I could see him. Was, was Ms. Rag there? Did you sit near her? No, we, she was up front, apparently. And we were sort of in the back. How has... Uh... How's your visitation going with Michael right now? I think it's going great. He has a lot of fun. Um, he likes numbers. Uh, the count to 100, 150. Uh, he still likes water a lot, so we go out and play with the hose. Um, he's very. He likes playing the organ. Um, actually, seems to have some kind of ability to, to play chords, which is kind of amazing. Why? Well. Yeah, I guess from his mother's side, because I can't do that. He's interested in the guitar. He's way too small to hold the strings down. But every time he sees it, he starts trying to play it. Um, I'm trying just to, to nail down a couple of big issues here. Okay. Uh, obviously, we all understand you're a doctor. Can you explain to me a little bit about your, your wife's medical condition? Well, she had an event back a year and a half ago where her sodium got so low that, that she lost consciousness um, and was having seizures in, in the ambulance, from what I heard. So, we, and that got, it was seen initially, and then the next time she went to the hospital for the same thing, it was even worse. So, we, tried, we corrected that at home. It didn't seem like the hospital actually wanted to follow through on that. So, it took a while to get her back, back mentally. Do you get like special doctor favors from other doctors or anything? None whatsoever. I, I have to schedule patients for neurology consults all the time. It's months out. Um, actually, August is pretty good. I've got people I scheduled just as recently as yesterday for September and October for neurologists. Yeah, but, but can't you call up one of your doctor buddies and say, hey, doctor buddy, um, I need my wife seen, you know, in 30 minutes. You guys don't work like that? No, it doesn't work that way. Um, the condition of y'all's house, uh, you said you don't have a swimming pool or a trampoline or uh, anything no, like that, right? No, just, just a big yard. Um, do you have a lot of guns laying around? No, we don't have any guns laying around. Well, you need to get some of those because you do live in Texas, right? Well, they're locked up in a safe. With a bunch of tools and baseball garbage on them, right? No, those, those are somewhere else. Um, 
I was thinking about asking you if you could take us on a tour there, but but I'm guessing that I'm on a desktop with the video, right? Um, yeah, it'd be kind of hard to do that. Okay. Uh, you remember when this case began, uh, myself and my paralegal came over to your place, right? Right. right. There been any big changes since then? Well, it's a lot cleaner, a lot less clutter. Um, we've got locks on the drawer on the drawers so that Michael can't open them. magnetic locks, as, as we, was suggested by Taylor. Um, so we implemented that. Um, picked everything up we, we needed to. And uh, I believe there was something earlier about your your wife does get up and and cook. Yes. Yeah. She. Yeah. She does. Does does she? How does she cook if she's on a walker and not mobile? She brings the walker in and, and leans on the counter. She can stand up. It's just the balance problem of walking. A lot of times I just use... Hold on. Hold on, Ms. Chapman. They're not talking to you. They're talking to Dr. Chapman right now. They can call you later. Hold on. Okay. And uh, during the, the course of this case, do you feel like CPS has been really very communicative with you and your wife? Um, well, given some of the things I've heard, no. Um, we, uh, again, with Angela, we, we didn't apparently miscommunicate on how to, how to set those appointments up. Mm -hmm. And there was seemed to be no communication that I could, I had already planned to take Tuesday afternoons off for those, for those meetings, which we've done later, late into, in 2022. And, um, I still have those, those times off on Tuesday afternoon. So the first scheduling we got was in the morning on Thursdays, which, which, which created a big, a big problem and couldn't be done. But as far as, well, again, we weren't communicated with about any ARDS meetings. Um, I continued to try to find out how Michael was doing in school and really got nothing, but he's doing well, um, which doesn't tell me a whole lot. And um, that's all I can think of right off hand. We, we have, apparently, we have completed our psychiatric evaluation so, and that's, you know, we have a report on that already. Both done our, our parental, our, uh, you know, parental guidance courses. So. Let me ask you, uh, since we talked about Angela and the counseling and all that, tell me about the login process with Angela. Okay, the login process works with, I, if I get, an, I can go to the site, but when I log in, if there's no, if there's no appointment schedule, I can't can't do anything. So I have to have an appointment schedule. I can go in and request an appointment. I can go in and I can look at what's available. And my initial appointment that I had available was, I have to look this up, but um, it was much earlier than we finally got in. And I scheduled it, I requested it because it was open. And then the next thing I got the next day was a bunch of scheduled appointments at times I couldn't make it. And that appointment disappeared. So, but I can't contact or I can't schedule an appointment. I can't make one unless I have an appointment scheduled and I have a link to get there. How do you get the, the link? How do you log in? Well, I, I can go, um, pretty much he sends me a notification of an appointment. And so do you have a user, do you have a username and password for it? Uh, no, just my email. And then they send you the, uh, login. Yeah. They send me a link after that. And then I go back to my email and hit that and go to the appointment. Did that create some, some issues too? Well, yeah, because initially way back, we, Angela said we were missing appointments and I wasn't, I was actually sitting there waiting for it and I got, had no link. I had no way to even you know, make the appointment. Um, I put messages in through the portal and got no response. I didn't get a phone call um, at, while, while I'm sitting by a phone. And so there was nothing I could do. And I would call to try to make the appointment, try to let her know. And no, I got nothing but an answering service. So yeah, this happened multiple times back in December. So <coughs> as far as my phone, I've had the same phone number for 11 years and I've had the same email for longer than that. So it's not, it's very possible to contact me. Going back to the house. Uh, does your wife go in the baseball room? No. Uh, doesn't play baseball. 
because your wife does use a locker, is uh, does she trip over any of this uh, clutter and tools and mess that's in your house? No, no, she doesn't trip over anything. How did uh, how the visits been going with with Michael? I think they're going great. I mean, he has a good time. Uh, at one point, he told us he said, "I I want to come here every day," and since he doesn't talk very much, that was really significant. What do you mean he doesn't talk very much? I thought he had a giant vocabulary. He does, but he doesn't talk with, with people. He talks, uh, he talks to his phone a little bit. And um, he, when he really wants to communicate, he will say something. Uh, I was out, we were out in the backyard playing, and he said, where's number nine, number 29? Because we were counting baseballs. And the other day, I, I recorded him on, on a phone saying, while he was looking, playing Angry Bird, he said, it's another bird. He can speak in senses if, if motivated to. What do y'all think about the uh, art process and their their take on on Michael? Well, it, it's kind of complicated, and I think they, they un, and they admitted they, they kind of underestimated his uh, his intelligence a little bit because when I heard that he could only get greater than or equal to sixty uh, percent of the time on numbers, I realized that was just because he didn't he didn't take the test right because he can count to, to a thousand um, and he knows it and he can count a number of objects and come up with a number and he also knows that number corresponds with spell you know spelling like he can write out 11 for 11 so i think the process is you know there's there's pluses and minuses um, i think i agree with one of with one of the people in there that it was at the last meeting that i think he needs to be in a special education class, though not a regular class. So, so let me bring that around. Um, you've heard the judge talk about how she isn't really too too keen on uh, special education at public schools. Right. right. How do you feel about? Uh, I, I agree. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. I, I would like to see him go to Oak Creek. I think there was some, some confusion. Bring me up to speed. Does uh, Oak Creek, when's the last time that I guess you, you spoke to him? Well, I think it was two weeks ago. And any issues with Michael going to Oak Creek? Uh, not if he's potty trained. No, no issues at all. They'd be happy to have him. <clears throat> Do you feel that you communicate with Michael more than anyone else? Yes. Why is that? Um, I'm his father, probably. You understand how Michael communicates, right? I do. Do you think Michael's going to face some special challenges as he grows, uh, having to learn how to communicate in a, I don't want to say a normal way, but that's the, the only words I've got right now. Well, yeah, I think he will, but I think he's going to get better because he's improving already. Um, he... Um, is attentive to adults, but pretty much ignores children, other children. So that, that's his main, right now, the socialization is, is a deficit, but I think eventually he'll get over that. He, he probably doesn't really like loud noises, does he? No, he doesn't. He's uh, quite demonstrative about that. And he likes his food to kind of be the same food that he can predict over and over again, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Um, you heard Ms. Rag talk about what she feeds Michael. Uh, do you remember that? Yes, I do. I prefer you, more nutritional stuff like the chicken and the yogurt and uh, his uh, Smarty Pants vitamins, all of which he likes. As opposed to waffles and ice cream. Exactly. You, uh, you want Michael back in your home, right? Absolutely, yes. You want him sleeping there, spending the night there, right? Yes, I do. Do you want to be the one that takes him all the way over off of Tremere to Oak Creek? Yes. And do you want to be the person that picks him up? Yes. There's, I think, a little concern about your schedule as a doctor. Is that going to interfere? And, and part of that's because there's been 
scheduling issues, and now we're learning those are communication issues between you and CPS. But is there going to be any issue with with you taking him and, and picking him up from Oak Creek? There, there shouldn't be because they're a before school program and an after school program. So I'm not very far from there. So I can easily take him in, go to work, and easily pick him up afterward. Um, there's a term used in jails and in prisons called white food. Have you ever heard that? No. That's the opposite of green food. Uh, doesn't have anything to do with race. It has to do with the color of the food. Pancakes, waffles, mashed potatoes, right. macaroni and cheese, uh, uh, yogurt, those kind of things. Do you have any opposition to trying to introduce them to green food? No, I don't. Does Do, do you all eat vegetables and things like that? We, yeah, we eat some vegetables, not big on vegetables, but but you're certainly not opposed to introducing Michael to those things. No, not at all. Uh, you've, you were ordered to pay child support and you've paid that, haven't you? Yes. In fact, I believe you've, uh, you've paid more than what the judge asked you to pay, right? Yes, that's correct. Why? Well, it was a, initially it was an incentive to try to get uh, Ms. Rag to take care of Michael. And uh, you, do you think she's done a pretty good job? I think so. I think she's done an okay job. Thank you. Do you one, one last question. Do you have any problems with keeping uh, Ms. Rag in, in Michael's life? No, not at all. Do you think he's become attached to her? Somewhat, yes. Why do you say somewhat? Um, well, I mean, just... I. He runs to her, and but I don't know, really know what goes on inside the home. Does Michael have a little trouble with uh, relationships? Relationships with, with kids, I don't, yes. He's a uh, very smart, very special little boy, isn't he? He certainly is. Thank you. Pass the witness. Anybody have any questions to Dr. Chapman? Your Honor, just a couple. Okay, Ms. Cummings. Thank you. Dr. Chapman, <clears throat> there have been reports that you did not believe Michael's diagnosis. Um, do you believe that your son has autism? Yes, I believe he's on the autism spectrum. Okay. And are you willing to facilitate his education and training um, that's going to be required with his diagnosis? Yes, I am. Okay. And then you had said during the last ARD meeting that there was one person that you agreed with, and it was because that person believed that Michael needed to be in a special education class. Is, and that's correct? Yeah, that's correct. I don't think he can be in a regular class right now. Okay. But is it your understanding that in the next school year, the school district is going to be putting him in a general education class? Yes, that's my understanding. And do you plan on following through if he's returned to you and enrolling him in Oak Creek Academy? Yes, I do. And that school focuses on children with an autism uh, diagnosis, correct? Well, one of, yeah, one of the things, but yeah, that, that's in their, in their uh, purview anyway. And you said they have smaller classroom sizes? Smaller classroom sizes, smaller classroom sizes and big classrooms, so. And Michael would have the ability to have one-on-one -on -one instruction from a teacher? Yes, they have, a, a, they have, they have two different psychological uh, organizations that work with them. And, um, Going back to the phones just for a minute, you have a cell phone, correct? Yes, I do. And Ms. Chapman also has a cell phone, correct? That's correct. And in addition to that, you guys also have a home phone, a landline, correct? Yes, that's correct. So there's definitely ways for anyone to contact you and reach you. Yes, there certainly is. And I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Hey, Thank you. Talked about uh, your opinions on your wife's health at this time, um, and you, you you made it sound like there's no issues. Uh, so, do you believe you're capable of caring for Michael by by herself? No, we have plans for having somebody come into the home. So I, I understand that. I understand you have plans, but do you believe that she is capable of caring for Michael by herself? My objection. Ask and answer, Your Honor. Mr. Chapman said no. That's why we're having someone come into the home. That's correct. I uh, overruled. She can, he, can, he can answer it in more detail for Mr. Sturmer's question. Can Mr. Sturmer ask it in a little more detail, please? 
Do you believe that your wife is capable of caring for Michael by herself without any help? No, I don't. Okay. Why do you believe that? She has ambulatory trouble. She can't walk around well. And so why did it take your child being removed for this to, this light bulb to go off for you? We had somebody coming in before this happened. Okay. So how did the home get so cluttered with trash and your wife is basically bedridden? She's covered in urine and everything else. Why was, why was the child found in that home environment with just his mother? The person who was taking care of the house quit two weeks before and we didn't know. How could you not know if she's not at your home? Well, we thought she had a temporary absence. So, okay. So you, your wife got that bad in two weeks. Yes. To where she's covered in urine. She can't get up on her own. She's got scabs all over her legs that are oozing with pus. And the child is, is just at home hiding in the closet with his mother like that. Well, first off, she wasn't covered with urine. She didn't have scabs all over her legs. And she was, and she had a bloody nose. That was one thing that happened, but, um, she was having some mental trouble because of the low sodium. Okay, so that. none of the things that was reported in the affidavit about her condition were true. Is that what you're saying? No, she did have blood on her and she wasn't well kept at the time. And there okay. was urine in the chair. So where did the urine come from? She couldn't hold her bladder. Okay. And you left her home by herself like that, right? Right. And you're a doctor. Right. Do you believe you should be held to a little bit of a higher standard when it comes to that kind of stuff, being that you're a doctor? Well, um, objection calls for a legal conclusion. Oh, uh, no, not when I have somebody coming in. But if they're not there and you're leaving your wife, even for a day with your child at home like that, do you believe that's OK? Um, I don't think it's perfect set up. No, but that's again why she took we took her to center of the hospital several times. And if you if you recall correctly. This was at the time when all the hospitals were full completely. I know this for a fact and I can prove it with COVID-19 patients. So we couldn't get her into the hospital. So she needed to stay in the hospital. She needed to go to a rehab center, but they refused to do that. So I'm not asking about you taking her to the hospital. I'm asking you about leaving her in that home. Do you think it's okay to leave her in it the was, home? It was, safe. it was safe to leave her home. It wasn't ideal. It was safe. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it was safe for her. Yes. She what was safe about it. What was unsafe about it? No, you don't ask questions, Mr. Dr. Chapman. A answer Mr. Stermer's questions. So what was the question again? What was safe, in your opinion, about leaving your wife and child at home with her being in that condition? Well, first off, the doors were locked. And she had, and uh, well, I still don't understand the point. Okay, your wife couldn't get up, right? She had trouble getting up, yes. She, she had an easy chair that, that could get her up. So, yes, yeah, she could get up. That she is, had urine soaked all over the chair she's sitting in because she can't get up, right? Because she couldn't get up fast enough, yes. Okay, so how is she supposed to take care of a child if she can't get up? Well, we again, we thought we... I took off a few times to take care of her like this. So um, we had somebody coming in. And again, I can't, I can't track somebody who's coming in and make sure that they're there every time. Cindy was paying her, so I didn't even know for sure when she was there. So was it correct during that time that she didn't have her own phone? No, it's not correct. So why did she tell everybody that she because she had, had a phone number? Because she was delirious from having low sodium. Okay. And explain again why she had the low sodium. It would never figure that out. It just happened on its own and now it's better? Yeah, it just happened on its own. It didn't have anything to do with that diet that you were forcing her to eat? No, it had nothing to do with that. Okay. And what was that diet? Well... When she went to the hospital, she wasn't eating hardly anything. That's judge. Yeah, that, that's. Yeah, uh, I I know you're going to make an objection for non-responsive. So, uh, Doctor Chapman, Ms. Turner, ask your question again, and so we can answer it. I asked you if Have her to diet Have had anything to do with that. What Take diet was she on? Well, she had Pepsi, uh, a little bit of protein drink. Uh, Gatorade sometimes, but she was she wasn't eating. That was the problem. That was part of the problem. And There's so, a pretty heavy uh, dose of. You said, well, wasn't there something included in the diet? Oh, there's also a very very heavy dose of ice cream included in that diet, right? No, that's long before that. What do you mean long before that? I mean she stopped eating like months before that. 
So whenever they came to the home um, at the time of the removal and they found all the ice cream tubs lined up, they just but made she, that part She too. wasn't eating it. She wasn't eating it. All right, hold on. Stop. Wait, Dr. Chapman, wait till Mr. Sturmer finishes the question because y'all are talking over each other. Mr. Sturmer, do it again. Whenever they came to your home at the time of the removal and they found all the ice cream tubs lined up on the counter, that wasn't part of that diet? No, it wasn't. She wasn't eating that. And they didn't find ice cream tubs lined up on the counter. They went to the refrigerator and or freezer and found ice cream in there. Okay. And she wasn't eating it. You also talked about some uh, issues with your, your vehicles. Um, you said you had two vehicles and you made it sound like they had some pretty minor issues, but they were causing you to be late and miss quite a few appointments, right? No, one, one appointment. Just one appointment? And that appointment was at nine in the morning. Had it been later in the day, I could have made it, but it was at, at, in Temple. And I started out, when I started out, it took me 20 minutes to get the car started. And when I called, it was too late to get there. Well, you understand that part of the CPS case, when we get to the conservatorship stage, is we're trying to do all the things to make sure that you're equipped to take care of your children or child um, in all facets of your life, whether it be mental health, physical capabilities, driving, jobs, things like that. Right. Just make it sound like this vehicle issue is so minor. So why not just get it fixed? Uh, well, first off, the problem right now, which I've tried to fix a few times and had the car started, this is not my car, this is the other, the second car. Um, I had it running and then once it, once the battery dies in this, the other car, I can't open the trunk because it's electronic and that's where the battery is. So that, that would involves trying to get somebody to open the trunk. So yeah, I haven't gotten around to doing that yet, but since Cindy's not driving around a lot, one car seems to be enough. Right. I guess my issue or my question really is just why not call a mechanic? Well, the problem is that the battery's dead, so I need to get, and again, like I said, I haven't gotten around to it. We've had AAA come out and start the car, and I put a battery charger on it, but as of the last time I tried to do this, the battery won't take a charge. Okay. There's nothing wrong with the car other than the batteries yet. Right. Um, you also mentioned that CPS and, and everybody just didn't communicate well with you. Um, didn't you say that in response to your attorney's questions? Yeah, I said there was a, some lack of communication. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so you, you like you've done. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, like with the arts, we didn't know about any arts meeting. Never even heard of it until April. Um, we had trouble figuring out how to do the counseling because the, initial, the judge's initial order said that it was to be arranged by CPS. So I assumed that meant they were going to arrange it. And then I found out later that no, I needed to do it. So I started on that. Um, other communication, can't think of anything right on hand. Okay. Oh, well, there was the food thing too. Initially, there were big problems uh, with the way Ms. Rag was interacting with us. She, she made some complaints. So we tried to fix those. And then uh, one of which was not bring food over and not bring him stuff. And then later on, we hear that we should, we should be bringing food. So there was a communication problem there. We were supposed to have known that that had all changed magically without anybody telling us. Play that last part again, I'm sorry. We were supposed to know that we were supposed to start bringing food after we've been told specifically not to. Okay. So do you feel that, that people were out to get y'all on this deal or what, what are you, what are you, your thoughts on that? Um, I felt like it was, it may, everything was made deliberately hard on us. Can you say that last part again? You're cutting out. I think everything was made deliberately hard for us. Deliberately hard. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so do you think that Angela Jordan specifically made it hard for y'all? She made it hard maybe by accident, by uh, not, not, not falling through the appointments and then claiming it was us who missed the appointments when, in fact, it was her that didn't send the link. So you don't think Angela Jordan knows how to work her own system? She does now, but at that time, she said she did. Okay. I called her at work one day, and she said she didn't understand all the electronics, uh, all the Internet-related things. Well, do you think they made it? deliberately hard for you to attend your own child's birthday? Yes, absolutely. We weren't, we were there the Wednesday before we had previous birthday. We hadn't even hadn't been invited to. So we didn't expect it. we were going there on Wednesdays only. We were there that Wednesday. I told Ms. Rag that my phone was broken, literally cracked and didn't work. And that was that. I wasn't told there was a birthday party. I wasn't told since we don't go there on Saturdays or Sundays, 
There was no way for us to go. I knew when his birthday was, but I assumed we weren't invited because nobody told us anything. My home phone. You were saying Miss Rag was lying about inviting you to the birthday party. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know your child's birthday, right? Yeah. So why weren't you calling, begging, "Hey, I'd like to see my child on my child's birthday"? Because because you're only seeing him once a week as per CPS's orders. Why didn't you ask to see your child on your child's birthday if you were not invited to this birthday party? Objection, Your Honor. Ask and answer. He's already stated CPS told us we were only allowed to see him on this specific day. That's, not what, I asked. That's not what I asked. I asked why you didn't ask for a visit on the birthday. I don't know Overruled. Why. He can answer it. Because we figured the answer was no. We figured we weren't invited. We figured we were spe spe specifically not supposed to go there. Why would so we do ask? Do you think that Ms. Rag has done a poor job of uh, taking care of Michael? Did I say that? No. But do you believe she's done a good job taking care of Michael? Yes. Okay. But you believe that you and your wife are better equipped to take care of Michael? Yes. Go ahead and explain that for me. Well, we're his parents. Um, we communicate with him a lot better, I think, on a personal level. He likes us. Um, he has more fun. He's smiling all the time when he's with us. He has a good time. And he does cooperate. The so-called running off He'll run out in front and wait for me to come out there. He has no intention of running away from me. He wants to go out and do something, and he leads me there. And that's how we, that's how we do things. Well, what happened with that incident in the park where Miss Rag had to stop him from running in the street? He I wasn't running off then? don't remember that at all. But she's making that up as well? I don't know. Okay. Objection, Your Honor. He answered, I don't know anything about that. The follow-up, so you don't <clears> – so she's lying – it's non he can't give an answer to that. It will be non-responsive because it's the response he just gave. Sustain. Well, what improvements do you feel like you and your wife have made during the life of this case? We've cleaned the house up. There's room. Everything's put away. The, there are locks on the drawers. Um, there are no safety issues at all now. And he has a room. He has a bed. He has a radio. He has a music box. He has a clock, a light has a nice place to stay there. We've got some new toys for him. Um, he's got a, a, a Raptor vehicle that he can ride if he wants to. He's got a tricycle that lays back that he can ride on. And we're taking places that he likes to go. So, but pretty much the, the mess that was in the picture initially is gone. There's plenty of room, there's no clutter on the floor and nothing unsafe. So in your opinion, because you just listed a bunch of, you know, you bought him a bunch of toys and you <clears throat> taken places. But the only thing that you mentioned that remotely has to do with progress in the case is cleaning the house. Is that the only thing that, that you believe that needed to be worked on whenever your child was moved? We've taken our parenting classes. Okay. What did you learn in parenting? Uh, learned about how to discipline, uh, how to, you know, how to time out or something that we had, had a, a vague idea, but not a really good one. Now I do. Um, also, just the idea of pulling them away from stuff. That was one of the things that was stressed. And you believe that you've implemented those things? Yes. So if Ms. Rag says the complete opposite, do you believe that she's lying on that as well? I didn't know she said the complete opposite. Well, you were here at the last hearing, right? Do you recall yes. her saying that, that she has to step in to redirect Michael? Judge, we ask that you take judicial notice of my client's presence at the last hearing. I'll take judicial notice of the chat was worth the last hearing. Go on, Mr. Sturmer. Do you recall her saying that she has to step in and discipline and, and redirect the child because you and your wife don't? No, I don't recall that. Okay. I'll pass the witness, Judge. Anybody else have any questions, Dr. Chapman? Your Honor, I have a few follow-ups. Okay, Ms. Cummings. Whenever the day that CPS got involved and you were, you had left the home that morning, when you left, was Miss Chapman bloody? No. Was she sitting in her own urine? No. Okay. So you did not leave her in your home in that condition? No, I did not. Okay. Her falling and getting the bloody nose that happened while you were already gone at work? Yes. And then earlier, whenever you were speaking with Kurt, you had mentioned that you're paying more than what the court ordered in child support. Yes, that's correct. How much are you paying a month in child support? Well, I was paying 2000 but we, we reduced it back to the amount that 
they're supposed to pay. And that's 1250. Okay. And you had mentioned that you had did the additional money as an incentive. Um, was that on your own or was that discussed and negotiated between you and Ms. Rag? It's what I offered her initially. So when you initially offered her $2,000 a month to care for your child, so that way he didn't go to a foster home. Right. That's correct. Did she, I'm sorry, I'm confused a little bit. So she wasn't just caring for Michael out of the goodness of her heart to help you out. It was a negotiation. Well, I thought it was out of the goodness of her heart to start with. And I wanted to make sure that there was enough monetary incentive for her to do it. Okay. And when did you stop paying the $2,000 a month? Oh, last month, I think. April? Yeah, April. And if Michael were back in your home, that's $1,200 to $2,000 a month that can be put towards his education, child care, and other services that he needs, correct? Correct. No further questions. Anybody else? I have a question. Ms. Minister. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Dr. Chapman, I want to make sure I understand. Do you believe that Ms. Rag took this child in because of money? No, not initially. But you believe that now? I believe she's holding on to him due to money, yes. Pass the witness. Anybody else? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, Dr. Chapman, you've, you stated that you paid your child support every month. That's correct, yes. Well, I thought there was an issue where you weren't paying child support. No, not, not to my knowledge. You don't recall uh, me contacting you uh, about uh, Ms. Mystic saying that you hadn't paid your child support? Yeah, I remember being contacted about that, but we cleared that up and had and pulled up the records. And I had. In fact, I think that the the problem was you hadn't paid child support for several months. Do you remember that? I remember a claim about not paying child support. Yes, and that was communicated. That was understood. That was people talked to each other on the phone about you not paying child support. Do you know that? Um, people talking to each other on the phone about, um, I know now. But. And, and what was the outcome of, of you not paying, that you didn't pay your child support? We found out that I did pay it. Oh, you did pay it? Yes. Uh, another, another miscommunication in this case. Isn't that right, Dr. Chapman? That's right. And you were doing what you were told to do, weren't you? Yes, I was. And you were sending the money. Yes. You were sending more money than you were ordered to. Yes, I was. It was even on time, wasn't it? Yes, it was on time. But somehow, somebody still said you weren't paying your child support, didn't they? Yes, they did. Oh, my goodness. Pass the witness. That's good enough. Thank you. Uh, anybody else have any questions, Dr. Chapman? No. Okay. Dr. Chapman, did you know that Michael had any special needs that would be need to be evaluated through the school system? Do I do I know that he has special? Yes. No. When he before he was removed, did you know? I guess I should have made that a better question. Yes, we we taken yes we taken to speech therapy. We were taken to different places. At one point, uh, he was we they were, we were told he had echolalia, and we had. Wait, hold on, I didn't understand that word. Say that again. Echolalia, that was the word. That? It means he repeats what he's told, and that's his only speech. So I had contacted somebody to get, I had names of people uh, that I could refer, refer him to, but he was taken away before I got a chance. Um, was, before Michael was removed, were him, him and Ms. Chapman on your uh, medical insurance? Yes. Okay. And you still have access to all that, correct? Yes. yes, that's correct. Is Mrs. Chapman on it now? Yes, she is. Did uh, Miss Cindy go to the ARDS also? Yes, she did. Uh, explain to me, and these questions are all over because I'm based them off of what the, the other lawyers asked you, okay? So they're not in any sort of chronological or subject order, okay? So just bear with me. Um, how has Mrs. Chapman's mental health improved? Well, she's not delirious anymore, um, and she's not passing out. And 
she solves you know solves problems does word puzzles um, yeah she's her, she's moving around better she can't actually walk without the walker but she's afraid to you know, because she balance problems uh, but mental health wise she's, memory's coming back so she's a lot sharper still with some memory problems but much better in the what, what's what's the basis of these problems the basis as best i can tell was a low sodium um, it was critically low almost to the point of not being compatible with life okay but now sodium levels are, are back to normal right right okay so what why why is she not am ambulatory part of it is due to back trouble I think she's got some neuropathy in her legs from, from uh, spine issues. Her x-rays, even prior to having ambulatory trouble, were really bad on her back. So it only takes a little bit to lose, lose some of the nerve function in your legs. Now, that's what that um, reflexology lady at the beginning of the case was coming out to, to work on, correct? Reflexology. I don't know anything about that. I thought there was a lady that was coming out at the beginning of the case that was working on Miss Cindy's legs and movement and maybe maybe massage stuff like that. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, I think she's just a therapist, I mean, a physical therapist. Um, what is what are y'all doing now about Miss Chapman's ambulatory miss? That's not really a word, but you know what I'm talking about. Able to to get around, move, going to therapists, stuff like that. Well, we, we take her out when she goes out and walks and she tries to walk inside the house and pushes the walker ahead of her so that she can practice walking. And she practices, she gets up and out of chairs and, and I have her standing a certain amounts of time to help build up her strength on that. Please tell me you only have a one story house. Yes, one story. Okay, we hadn't talked about that. One thing we haven't been mentioned. Um, are there steps in and out of your house and down into the backyard? No, it's flat. Okay. Um, what does Cindy do during the day? Um, you might have to ask her. I think she plays word games on, on her cell phone. And what that my brain. Hold on. No, no, no. We can't talk. We can't do that, y'all. We're at normal hearings. We're able to cheat a little bit. We're having trials, so we can't do that today. So, hangs out at the house. Does, who does y'all's laundry, Dr. Chapman? We split it. What does that mean? I mean, I do it part of the time. She does it part of the time. Okay. Um, now, you said that uh, these aren't your exact words, but that you had multiple people lined up to help. Right. That's great. Okay. Explain that to me, okay? Okay. Well, I have uh, several different babysitters. I've got, um, I've got an, an ex-nurse. Now, you're talking about with Michael at home or in the summer or... All the above. All the above. Okay. The, house, the whole thing. Okay. There's a. I have a, a babysitter that's willing to start at any time. That I've already contacted. And I have a phone number. Um, I have a an ex nurse who's running a daycare center. I can take Michael there if need be. Um, I've also got the two. There's a, uh, a brain strong summer camp uh, in Colleen that I can take him to. And they they uh, advertise. Uh, treating autistic children, and I can also have him go to the uh, Oak Creek summer camp. Okay. What about uh, home health services? Oh, well, hold on, back up. You said babysitter. Is that somebody that would come into y'all's home, or would yes. Michael be there? They come into our, our home. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm getting lightning and thunder at my house, bad. So, um, what about home health? helping around the house, uh, housekeepers, yard, stuff like that. Well, we have somebody that, most, that does the yard now. Um, I do some of it because I have a small mower. Um, housekeeper, we don't, we don't have a housekeeper. Okay. Um, and going back to childcare, you've talked to all those people, you found out about costs, all that kind of stuff, correct? Right. Okay. Um, Dr. Chapman, how... Do you think that I can send Michael home? Oh, hold on, let me ask. Let me go back. How do we know for sure that those people are available if hypothetically I were to send him home tomorrow? Well, it's because I have multiple different options. If one of them doesn't work, I have another one. Okay. Um, 
Oak Creek. That's the name of the, of the school, correct? Yeah. What what town is it in? Sorry, I, didn't, I didn't get the last of his Oak Creek and then what? Academy. It's in Colleen. Colleen. Okay. How far is that from y'all's house? Uh, probably 15, 16 miles. Is it on your way to, do you work at a hospital or a clinic or is it all together? It's all together. Okay. Is that on your way? It's actually a little past that. Okay. About three or four miles past that. And so they take little ones that aren't in school and then they, and they have a school also, correct? Right. That's correct. How, um, how, what grade does the school end in? Like with the sense? Uh, 12. Okay. Um, is it religious based or just a, a private school? Just a private school. Okay. Let's talk about y'all's cars for a little bit. Um, one car is, I guess yours, one car is Cindy's. That's correct. Yes. And what kind of cars are they? Uh, one is a H A. Uh, Cindy's car is an HHR. Uh, so what is it? A Ford. Ford HHR, and uh, mine is a uh, the GM Denali. Okay. GM Denali. Okay. So yours is I don't know what is what Miss Chapman's car is, but yours is um like an SUV kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, we got that specifically because of Michael. Okay. How long have your cars been having problems? Um, her car has been having problems for a, year, a couple of years. Actually, not. We just haven't been driving. Okay. Well, what if something happened and Miss Chapman were need to leave during the day and her car's in the garage broke? And what would we do? Call a cab. Okay. Y'all have cabs there? I live in yeah. the country, so I don't know about that. Yeah, we, we kind of do too. Yeah, we have cabs here. Okay. Uh, Dr. Chapman, do you feel that Angela Jordan's suggestions or her therapy was helpful to you and Ms. Chapman? I think that <clears throat> Oak Creek was a good idea, yes. Okay. What about just visiting with y'all and, and just st anything other than talking about Oak Creek? Yeah, I, th I think they were helpful. We enjoy talking to them. Okay. Dr. Chapman, um, remind me about what type of medicine you practice, sir. Internal medicine. Okay. How much longer do you plan on practicing? <clears throat> A lot of years, um, at least five. Okay. Uh, and how old are you and Ms. Chapman? I'm 70. She's uh, 62. Okay. So you're like me. They're just going to keep going until they tell you not to go away, huh? Right. right. Okay. I, I understand. Um, now, do y'all have any other children? No. No? Uh, never? I mean, Michael's y'all's first all the way around. Yes. Were y'all married before? I was married uh, for about four years from 96 to 2000. Okay. What about Miss Chapman? No, she's, she's never been married. Okay. Except um, excuse me. I'm sorry. What? Me. Uh, yeah, I got it. I figured that one out. Um, so prior to removal, Michael was going to a, a speech therapist, correct? Right. Yes, that's correct. Was he getting any kind of, I mean, to me, socialization for kids is huge. Okay. Was he doing anything outside of the home? Uh, did y'all go to church? Did he go to like Mother's Day out, vacation Bible schools? Did he go to anything like that before he was removed? No, he didn't. Um, did y'all notice that possibly he wasn't on track for a three-year-old at the time? With the speech, yes. That's why we were taking the speech there, yes. Okay. But you thought everything else was, was okay? Yes, we thought he was very, you know, athletic and uh, good endurance and strong and everything else. But, yeah. Would, would also, you baseball and stuff with him in the backyard? He's not interested. So I'd like to get him interested, but that just doesn't seem to be his thing. Okay. Well, I was going to ask about Little League or T-ball. I guess that answers that, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well I've, given, uh, well, uh, go on. well, I've given him a bat to swing and he just, he's not really interested. You know. Does he like to kick a ball? No, doesn't really like to do that. He doesn't like to pedal anything. So you can put him on a bicycle and he won't pedal. You can put him on a tricycle. You can push him, but he won't pedal. You can put him on a on a, a kick 
a kick scooter and he'll he'll stay on it as long as you push it he doesn't he's not into self-propulsion at all so okay but learning how to ride a bike all those kind of things are things he's gonna have to learn how to do right right what about swimming did he go to swimming lessons when he was a little guy he did i'm concerned about him learning how to swim but is, is that something that's important to you and miss cindy yeah yes it is Riding a bike, swimming, those are just kind of like some of those things you got to learn how to do, right? Yeah, the, the swimming is the number one because I don't want to drown. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Dr. Chapman, do you know, and I don't know if it was on that, um, you know, once again, don't get me started on schools and special ed programs, but do, do you happen to know, did, that, number one, did y'all get, did the department give y'all copies of all the special ed stuff that came out of Michael's evaluations? We, I'm not sure what part of it would be considered special ed, but we've got a lot of documents on that. And okay, I've got good. evaluation now. Did they test his IQ? Do you know? I think in a, in a way they did. I don't think they put it uh, as an IQ. They said he was good at certain things and not at others. Okay. Maybe he's too little to get a, like a numerical IQ. I, I don't know when that starts. Um, now, Dr. Chapman, You know, when you have special ed kids, you're kind of in a quandary because school districts are, you know, you know what I think about that. But then also schools like Oak Creek aren't federally mandated to provide the same type of programs and instruction and stuff that the, that the ISDs are required to do. So did you visit with the Oak Creek folks about what they plan to do with Michael's SPED requirements? I visited with them. We didn't get into that specifically, no. Okay. Um, do you, do you know what an IEP is? I did uh, a, a week ago, but right now I can't tell you. Okay. Individual education. Right. Okay, good. So that would be something that you would definitely need to speak to Oak Creek about, correct? Right, correct. Okay. In, in you and your wife's opinion, do you... How do y'all feel about children being socialized, being around other children outside of school? I think it's great. And would y'all be able to find some things that Michael liked outside of school? If we had more time with him, yeah. So we're always trying to figure out what Michael likes to do. Okay. And, and y'all have the ability to take him to places and do things, correct? That's correct, yes. You know, libraries, I forget about libraries. They have good, they have good programs too. Um, remind me again, and, and uh, uh, Ms. Velasquez testified as to your days on, your days off. I mean, is it carved in stone? Tell me how all that stuff works. Ideally, you, you put in a, a time off request well in advance, but you can do it um, at the last minute if you have to, but that causes patients to, to have, you have to cancel patients and it doesn't, doesn't go well in patient care when you do that. So... If I know I have something in advance, well in advance, I take time off for that. Okay, so give me, you tell me your days you work. Okay, I work Monday, all day Monday, uh, Thursday and Friday. Tuesdays I take off at 1.30 for my counseling appointments, and Wednesdays I take the afternoon off. Wednesday, you said you take the afternoon off? Okay, and when you say you work, so basically you work all day, Monday, Thursday, Friday, what are your hours? I'm um, 7.30 to 4.30. And are you, you stay at the clinic the whole time uh, right. or do you leave? The whole time. Okay. Um, and are you on call? No. You never have to work nights or weekends? Never. No. Okay. So I, I believe through your testimony, you said if Michael is returned to y'all, you would take him out of public school. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. If they accept him, yes, I would. What, what if Oak Creek wouldn't accept him? What would you do? We'd send him to uh, Hoppers Cove Public Schools. Okay. What's, your, what's y'all's rent? I, I, the testimony was that y'all rent. Y'all don't own your house. You rent it, correct? That's correct. It's, How it's, long have y'all been there? We've been here 11 years. Okay. So no plans to move anytime soon? No plans to move. No. Okay. Uh, what's y'all's rent? It's 1500 a month. No, I'd stay there too. Uh, that's good these days. What What's your take home, Dr. Chapman? About ten thousand a month. Okay. And uh, these lawyers work. I'm not a Bell or a Coryell County lawyer. I'm elsewhere. I don't know if you know that or not. So these lawyers work with the military all the time. I'm not. 
I, I'm a hill, more of a hill country guy. So I don't know all the military stuff like they do. do the, does the government take out all that kind of military stuff out of your pay? Or are you just like, are you just kind of just like a regular employee like me? No, they do all the same military stuff. They split the, the check into two parts and they give you a cost of living allowance and half of it. So your 2% increase for your own numbers. Hold on. You got to say that again. Ms. Greenwald and I didn't get that. Oh, okay. They split, they split it in half. And they split it in there. half somehow or other. And they give you a cost of living increase on half of it. So if I get a 2% increase, it's only 1%. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, and do you get, um, what do y'all call it? BAF or housing? Or I don't know what they call it. You get housing allowance? No, I don't, I don't get anything called a housing allowance. No. Okay. So what's taken out? Uh, so it, what would be your gross before they take all the government stuff out? About eight, about eight, 18000 a month, I think, 17000 Well, they take out a lot. Yeah, they took out a lot. Are y'all home or y'all at work? We're at home. Um, why did y'all quit paying Miss Rag the $2,000? We didn't want to give her any further incentive to keep Michael. And um, y'all, you know, I ordered y'all to pay child support, correct? Correct. And we're, and Mr. Glass asked you a bunch of questions about this. I'm just going to get it clarified because I'm a little confused because today's the first time I've heard about this extra money. Were you paying Miss Mystic the child support and giving Miss Rag the extra? How is all this going down? Well, I would pay it to Kurt and then Kurt would send it to Miss Mystic. That's my understanding. And then you she would would send, go on. And then she would send it to Ms. Rad. The whole 2000 or? I think so. I'm not sure. Okay. So you would write Mr. Glass a check or give him $2,000. And however they trickled it down, that's how it trickled down, correct? Exactly, yes. Okay. And remind me again how you and Ms. Chapman know Ms. Rag. Uh, she used to be a patient. And how did her keeping Michael, how'd that go down? How did it start? Yeah. Or how, how did, yeah. How did, did y'all think of Ms. Rag or tell me how all this came up? Well, he, he was, I told Ms. Rag he was taken away and, uh, and she said, offered to me, he said, I take care of him. She would take care of him, but he was already with somebody by that time. So later on, I asked her if she would do it for $2,000 a month. And she said, yes. And that's because the other person did not want to take care of him anymore. The first person, wasn't it somebody in y'all's neighborhood or something? It was the, the mother of an ex-housekeeper. Say that again, I'm sorry. It was the mother of one of our ex-housekeepers. That's right. And what happened, remind me what happened to her again? Say it again. Well, she just didn't want to take care of him anymore. How long, how long has Michael been with Miss Rag, if you, if you know? Since roughly December of 2021. Okay, about a year and a half. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have any questions, Dr. Chapman? One, one quick one, Your Honor. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Chapman, uh, with all of these car problems that you've had, have you ever uh, missed work because of one of them? No. That's it. Okay. Anybody else? Ms. Mystic, do you have any questions? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Ms. Sturmer, you're done. Uh, next witness, Mr. Glass. Call uh, <clears throat> Mrs. Miller. Ms. Miller, I just want to cut to the chase on this. What's, uh, what's going on with you medically? Um, well, I, I still use the same walker that I have, but I hardly, oftentimes, I, I think Mike might have said, I'll just push it like maybe 12 feet and, and I'll walk up to it. And I, I'm, I'm just about to the point where I can walk on my own, but you know, it's a, it's a process. And um, Mike and I walk outside every night and again with my walker, but most of the time I'm only holding onto one side of it. And so I know that it's going to be there at some point I'll be walking on my own. You guys, your, your mother was staying with y'all when she passed, right? Yes. Um, do you know what happened? There were allegations that uh, Dr. Chapman was poisoning you, that Dr. Chapman uh, may have not been feeding you, and there was a, an adult protective service investigation. Do you remember that? Yes. 
What do you know what the result of that investigation was? Well, it, it, I mean, they came in and they looked around and see if there was food and, and determined that he, it, it, he had a variety of foods to eat. And that was mostly because of me. Mike did a lot of the groceries, but I would cook. Um, I'd, I'd make him things he likes, not just chicken nuggets. He sure does like them, but you know, he needs to have a balanced diet. He, I, I could even get him to eat some salad, not mm -hmm. willingly, but. But there was, uh, there was no finding of, uh, basically Dr. Chapman was not arrested for trying to kill you, was he? <laughs> no, he, he was not. And APS did not, they didn't continue to investigate. They're no longer in your, they, they didn't do anything, right? That's correct. Do you have any, well, what, uh, what doctors do you currently see? Well, it's about time for the dentist, but um, my husband is a doctor, but I don't, he doesn't really, I'm, I'm doing very well. I'm, I'm I don't, my only concern right now is that Michael gets a chance to run and play in the yard. And I can't do that with him, but I can sure sit down on the porch and watch him and smile with him. And he'll come over and, and climb up on me and kiss me and hug me. And he's so happy with us. And I just feel sad that we can't keep him, but I understand what we're doing here. Can you drive? Well, uh, yes, I can. Um, uh, it's, I, I'm, you know, I'm still getting, I wouldn't go like, you know, more than 10 miles away or something, but yes, I do drive and um, I, it's, um, I'm, I'm nervous about it sometimes because I don't want to, um, <laughs> what are you saying to me? Uh, do you, oh, can I, you I, I'm sorry. I drove him to surgery. I did. And, and I also drove him home he, and, and nobody got hurt. <laughs> Which is good. Yeah. Which is good. And you've got other things for Michael to eat in the house besides just chicken, chicken nuggets and yogurt. Yes. Thank you. Pass the witness. Anybody else? Any questions, Ms. Miller? Sorry, Ms. Miller. I've been calling you Ms. Chapman, but you okay. know, that's You're okay. Right. Ms. Cummings. Thank you. Ms. Miller, um, just to kind of expand on what Kurt was trying to say, you have a driver's license, correct? Yes. And you know how to drive? I do. You don't prefer to drive, though, do you? No. Okay. no. So if you, if you need to get somewhere and you don't want to drive there, do you have other options available to you to get somewhere? Well, Mike usually figures out a way. Um, it, it may not be him doing it, but somebody's going to show up to get us where we need to go. So you could call an Uber? Well, or a taxi service? We could. Well, um, yeah. Okay. We actually have done that in a pinch. And as far as little Michael's concerned, you would agree that as of right now, you need some assistance in chasing him down because you're not there yet. Yeah, that's true. And you and Dr. Chapman are making those arrangements to have someone available to assist you. Is that correct? Yes. Hopefully not for too much longer, because I think we're all getting a lot better on our feet and no, you know, nobody's falling down. Everything seems to be moving very well, I think. Have you been seeing a physical therapist? Well, some time back. Do you remember that? Oh, Ms. Chet or Ms. Miller, just if you don't, are you currently seeing one right now? No, I'm not. But you've seen a physical therapist in the past. Yeah. And if your doc, your primary doctor said that you need to go back to physical therapy, you have the resources to get that set up and to go to physical therapy. Yes, very definitely. And if you needed in-home health care for daily care, you have the means and insurance and availability to get that resource. Yes. Okay, I'll pass the witness. Ms. Starmer. Ms. Miller, why do you think that your child was removed from your care? Well, at the time, um, he was not receiving the kind of care that I wanted him to have. Can you elaborate on that, please? Well, I was not 
ambulatory very, very much. I was sitting in that chair you mentioned, and um, it, it was it wasn't safe for Michael at that time. And I, I again, there was the sodium issue, and I I was not necessarily in my right mind. So that's about the best I can say. But yet you were at home by yourself taking care of Michael, right? Yes, I was. Okay. Do you recall how long you were in that condition? I don't recall anything about laying in my own urine. I, I don't recall that. But I, I, I know that I was not in my best mind at that time. What changes do you think that y'all have made in the course of this case? Um, Judge, Judge Miss Dr. Chapman is telling her things. Yeah, no, okay, I'm going to separate y'all, but. And I, I have a, a real problem with that because that's one of the issues that has happened in this case is that Dr. Chapman talks for her. And so while she's, you know, instructing her during her testimony. Yeah, Miss Miss Miller. Yes. Mr. Sturmer, say your question again and look at the camera, Miss Miller. Okay. I don't, I don't think I want to ask any more questions of her right now after I think she's been coached by him, so I don't think I'm going to ask any more questions. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Ms. Mystic, any questions? Um, I just have a couple. Ma'am, have y'all, since this case started, had regular um, individual coming in the home to say, help clean the house? Can y'all not hear me? No, we can hear you. Ms. Miller, ask, answer a question, please. Did you tell me again what the question was? I'm sorry, I it got confused with all the people talking. Yes, ma'am. Um, since this case started after my removed, have you all had a regular cleaning person come to your home and help you with the house? Yes. Okay, and who is that? Um, it's, we don't have it anymore. Um, Trying to remember the name of the person. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't remember the name. That's okay. When's the last time someone came into the home to help you with the house? Well, it's been a while. Um, I I got to the point where I was moving around and cleaning and cooking, and I said, "Well, I don't think I need any of these people anymore." And I think what I heard from testimony is that if. Michael comes, depending on whatever the judge does, but if the judge decides that Michael can come for times during the week in the summer, are you telling us somebody will be in the home with you when that child is there, if your husband is not there? Yes, that's that's correct. Oh, is, we, okay. I, okay. I will find a, another person if my husband is not there. I won't leave Michael alone ever. Thanks, ma'am. That's all I have, Judge. Sorry, I had lightning. I had to turn the, uh, I had to mute. Uh, anybody else have any questions, uh, Ms. Miller? Ms. Yes, sorry. Oh, go on, Mr. Stern, Mr. Glass. Go on. Um, Ms. Miller, who, uh, who's cl currently cleaning the house? Well, mostly Mike and me. We don't okay. have anybody coming in. All right. Thank you. Pass anybody else? Your Honor, um, just one follow up. Okay. Miss Miller, in your in your own words, um, what has changed since the very start of this case? Well, I a lot. Um, my husband and I are on much better footing. We're we're spending a lot of time with our child. Um, we we love him and we uh, we play and we, he goes in the backyard and I don't I don't I don't take my walker out there, but I sit on the porch and I I watch and, and he comes and he climbs up and he sits with me. And it's just, it's so much better than it ever has been. Has your health gotten better? Yes. I'm much stronger. I can pull myself up and stand and, and, you know, I'm to the point where I, I just could kind of just use one arm on the, the walker and I could get where I needed to go, except on those very steep hills <laughs> at Miss Rag's house and other places. I'll pass the witness. Anybody else? 
No. Okay. Ms. Miller. Um, tell me your background before you married Dr. Chapman. Give me some info on you. Okay. Uh, I was a, a high school school teacher, uh, English education. Uh, I had, um, beyond that, um, had an extra year of, um, what's that called when you're going to college anyway? Master's. And, yeah, a master's degree. I was uh, the head of, head of my class when they used to do this pomp and circumstance stuff. Uh, no, no problem with the brain as long as there's some sodium in there. Um, I don't know what else to say. Uh, how, long were you, how long were you a teacher? Oh, oh gosh. Um, well, now I'm count it up here. Uh, at least, at least twelve years. But I, I, I'd like to say that it was more than that. And then again, I, I guess I did my postgraduate stuff later too. So. How long have you and Dr. Chapman been married? Oh gosh, I'm not allowed to ask him, am I? Okay. Um, you, can guess, you can guess. Well, it's, it seems to me like it's pushing 20. Okay. Were you, did you work during the time you were married to Dr. Chapman? No. And it might not have been 20. It might've been a little less than that. Okay. And you, and Dr. Chapman said you weren't married before, correct? That's correct. Where did y'all meet? Well, <laughs> oh, this is, okay. Here's the story. Um, we met online, which was a terrible thing to do, but um, we talked and um, before too long, we decided we liked each other and wanted to spend some time together. So Mike flew out and um, that, so then we were both together. And then after that, we had a, a child that was very difficult to get and we're so happy that we have him. But um, it's been, you know, a, it's been a tough road and I'm, I'm just very happy that we're together and in a place that we like it with people that, you know, know how to be, take the, the, the necessary precautions so that no one is hurt. Okay. Um, is Michael y'all's biological or is he adopted? How do I explain this? Uh, it was a artist. That's thing when when they um, inseminate, yes, the artist insemination, and it was for a gal as old as me, it wasn't easy, but that's how we did it, and and there was this beautiful little very very tiny baby because you know he'd been through a lot, but was he born uh, on time or early, late, forty weeks? Do you remember? I think they had to take him early. They were concerned about. Yeah, not having enough breath and you know all of that so he was he was pretty little how, how big was he when he was born do you remember well I don't know anything about weight but I'd say his length was maybe only 15 <coughs> 12 you know he was still a little baby okay um was he born in Texas or elsewhere uh I think well, he was well born is the question. Um, use, the mic, use the mic, please. I'm sorry. Uh, he was born in Texas, but uh, all of the artists, uh, this, did you say that? Our artist's official insemination was done in um, what, Spokane? So I'm not allowed to talk. You know, it was, it, it was uh, where I was living at okay. that time. Okay. Um, Ms. Miller, can you pick up Michael physically? Yeah, I can, I can, but I'm very, very aware that he's getting longer and stronger. And so I don't ever just pick him up all by myself. Um, I make sure that, that Mike is around, somebody's around. Mike. Microphone. Mike, sorry. Yeah. Microphone. Yeah. So um, I, I'm thrilled when I get a chance to just pick him up and put him in my lap and hold him. And that's usually when we're on our way home to Miss Bragg's house. I, I went to either direction. You, you can't like just hang, stand there and pick him up. But if you're sitting down and he wants to come climb into your lap, you yes. can hold him your lap, yes. right? That's kind of what we do at the end of each visit. Okay. He sits in my lap and snuggles with me. And then I kind of lift him up and hand him over to Mike. And, and that's that. What, 
What does he call you and Dr. Chapman? He calls me mommy. Okay. And what about Dr. Chapman? I think he says daddy. Daddy. Okay. That's cute. Um, Miss Miller, how long have you been having in your lifetime? How long have you been having these ambulatory problems? Can't hear you. Um, yeah, I'm, hear you. I'm sorry. It, it would be it would be in, in my early graduate um, days, uh, years. Okay. I, I, I didn't have well, I, when I was going through pomp and circumstance. I didn't have a walker. <laughs> okay. Right. What about when um, you were when you were uh, inseminated with uh, Michael? Were, did we have an ambulatory problems then? You know, he was still so little that it was mostly just carrying him. No, no, no. When you when you were going through the pregnancy, the in, the in vitro or what all, all that stuff you were doing. Okay. I'm still I'm trying hard, but I'm I'm misunderstanding the question. When, when you were going to the doctor to get pregnant, yeah, uh, were you having ambulatory problems then? No, no, no. It was it, it was later. Um, what about when he was born? And since he was a little guy, like a little tiny baby, did you have ambulatory problems? Boy, not alone. Uh, and I know it was hard. It was tough for Mike at that point. I mean, there are times when he had to come home from work to make sure that everything was okay. But he, you know, it, it, it was that far back. Did you, uh, when, when Michael was born, did y'all have a nanny for a while? Yeah, I'm, I I don't know. Was it Tom? No, remember you can't ask him. Did you, when he, you know, a lot of people have nannies when they have babies. Did y'all have a nanny? Do you remember? Yes, I think we did. Yes. Okay. Okay. And um, Miss, sorry, these are kind of out of order because I'm just right going from what the lawyers asked you. Um, Miss Miller, what's the reason for you having ambulatory problems? Well, I I tripped. And Michael and I were nearby. And so I was very concerned that I didn't want him to get hurt. So I was trying to, you know, trying to you know, get him into a better position and being kind of caught. It wasn't caught, but it was a uh, microphone. <laughs> he couldn't, he couldn't get up by himself. And so um, I was picking him up too. And it, it did turn into a little bit of a scuffle trying to get both of us up where we needed to be, but we did. And it was, yeah, that was, I guess, my first fear that time. Um, it, are you, is you not being able to get around good? Is it, and I, it's, I don't want to be tacky or mean, and I apologize. Is it due to sodium? Is it due to orthopedic problems? Is it due to weight? What's it due to? Okay. Well, I definitely think the sodium was a huge part. Um, and, and there's a lot more that I could talk about on that, but, but the, he, he wasn't able to, or I wasn't able to lift him the way that I should have. So sometimes he, he'd get out to the fridge or, you know, and it wasn't, it was not a good situation for him. He, he, he could, you know, pretty much run around the house, but I would always be there watching or, you know, using my walker and going with him. I mean, stop Mike again. Sorry about that. Um, so but why can't you get around now? Could you repeat that one more time? Why can't you get around now? Um, boy, it's, it feels like it's just so close. I, um, I, I, I push the walker. I push it quite a ways away. I walk up to it, but I just don't feel safe enough to, to just start walking on my own. Okay. Now go back to the mic. Um, man, back when Michael was removed, the, the lack of sodium, uh, you know, the high, whatever that word is, and of course, nobody can pronounce probably except for your husband, because he's a doctor. Um, it is, uh, the lack of sodium that you have, was that due to, to poor diet or do you, do you know? I don't know. You don't know. Okay. I guess sometimes it just happens with people. Well, um, Miss Miller, do y'all, uh, uh, there's already been testimony that y'all live in a neighborhood with a huge kind of, kind of, kind of rural, but got a big backyard. Do y'all know your neighbors? Um, they're, they're a little bit standoffish, but, uh, partly because all the yards are big and one guy's got, you know, one thing going over there and the other guy's got something going over there. And 
sometimes when, you know, Mike's hitting balls in the backyard, he'll have to climb up a ways to find them. So it's just, it, there's a lot of, a lot of big yards there. Do y'all have neighbors on both sides of your house? Yes. Okay. Um, do y'all do anything outside the house to socialize with any friends, church, um, library? Do y'all do anything outside the home? Friday nights at Walmart, like we do, you know, things like anything like that. Well, I, yeah. Um, we we, we kind of like to watch television. <laughs> so we have some of our favorite shows and, but again, that's not so much when Michael's been around, but um, I. Okay, that's fine. Um, I took him to Austin to the roller thing. And yeah. It's there. Anyway. Well, he's been removed for, uh, well, you know, going on two years, almost two years starting the summer. What do you and Dr. Chapman do together as a couple? Well, we, mostly we go places with Michael and. Uh, Miss Bragg will be there and drop him off, and we'll go and play uh, Lions Park or um, just further. hang out. What? Just hang out, right? Yeah, he loves to walk though, and and he'll he'll just walk like crazy wherever he is, and that's why it's a little problem if I don't have hold of his hand. Um, Miss Ch- Miss Miller, sorry, I almost called you Chapman. Do you know? Um, when the last time you saw a physical therapist was? I can't recall. Okay. And, and do you go to, you know, like, do you go to like doctors to, I know you got to go to the dentist. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but do you go to doctors uh, monthly, every other month? You have, you have to go to your GP all the time? Um, I go when, this is hard because of him, but I go when I think I need a doctor. Okay. But not him. Uh- how many, do you know how many meds you take or do you even take any during a day? Well, not much. Occasionally I get kind of a headache toward the end of the day. So I'll take a few Motrin. Okay. No, no serious things going on medically for me. Do you take any prescriptions on a regular basis? No. no. Okay. That's good. Uh, you know, we've talked about you and I apologize for that, but we didn't, I didn't think about this. So I was, the lawyers were talking to you. Does Dr. Chapman have any medical problems that we need to know about? No. no. Okay. Well, it was just wasn't fair to talk about you and not talk about <laughs> me. Um, ma'am, tell me how you think it's practical that Michael, little Michael could come home and y'all have care 24 seven or every time Dr. Chapman's not at the house. Can you explain that to me? Yeah, I can explain it. And I'm, I'm sorry to say it's money. There's, there's, there's always enough money to pay somebody to be where and when we need them. And I, I'm sorry, but that's the truth of it. No, that, that's a good answer. I mean, it, it's uh, not everybody has that option, right? I know. Okay. So other than like rent, car payments, electricity, y'all, it sounds like y'all lead a pretty frugal lifestyle. Would you agree with that? I think so. Yes. Okay. Any big expenses each month that I don't know about? Well, he spends too much money at Walmart looking for toys. (laughs) And, and, you know, as a wife, I bet you'd say baseball stuff too, huh? Well, I mean, yeah, they, they have this little game over in the corner of the house and it shoots balls and Michael tries to bat at them and that, you know, but I don't really think Michael's going to be a ball player. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank, thank you, Ms. Miller. Anybody else have any questions for Ms. Miller? Your Honor, I have a couple of follow-ups. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ms. Miller, I think one of the questions we were trying to get to, when did you first start having trouble walking around? Was it before Michael was born or after? After. Okay. And you were kind of describing, did you fall at one point after he was born? I did. Yes. Okay. And the other question is, um, do you and Dr. Chapman spend time together as a couple, just the two of you? Yes. When and my- what, kind of, what kind of things do you guys do together? Well... We have some of our favorite television shows that we watch in the evening after, 
if Michael was there, it would be after he was asleep, but uh, just, you know, in plain sight. <laughs> so I get a kick out of her. Okay. Do you, and you guys spend time watching TV together and you go, you go for walks. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And do you spend time talking during your walks? Well, Michael's pretty interested in what he's doing when he's walking. And I don't think it's so much talking, is it? Okay. No, it's, it's me. Okay. All right. And then would you consider Dr. Chapman the primary caregiver for Michael? Yes, I would. No further questions. I'm sorry. Wait a second. Did you say primary caregiver? Correct. So in the evenings okay. and when you guys have him on visits, is he primarily chasing after little Michael changing his diet? Well, he's a potty train now, but changing diapers, yeah. changing clothes. That's correct. Yes. No further questions. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, no more. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Uh, Ms. Cummings, uh, any more witnesses? Uh, Your Honor, I had no witnesses. That was Mr. Glass. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Any more witnesses, Mr. Glass? No, Your Honor. We rushed. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Mystic, any witnesses? No, no, Your Honor. No. Okay. I'm happy to hear from everybody. Ms. Sturmer. Judge, we're asking that Ms. Rag be named the permanent managing conservator of Michael. We're asking that the parents be named the possessory conservators and that the visits for the parents remain the same um, and that you continue the child support obligation. Uh, we do acknowledge that the parents went to services. They've checked the boxes, uh, but we don't believe that they've uh, absorbed any of the material that they uh, were there for um, or that they implemented any lifestyle changes. Uh, when I asked Dr. Chapman about the changes that they made, all he could talk about was the toys that he's bought Michael and that they cleaned the house. Uh, then you have Miss Miller specifically acknowledging that Michael was not in a good position to be at that home uh, at the time of the removal and that he was neglected. She blatantly said that, um, and that, that shouldn't have happened to him. Uh, I think that if the child is returned home, that he will be in that same position. He's going to be in immediate danger and that he's going to continue to be neglected just as he was uh, whenever the re removal happened. Uh, we believe Miss Rag uh, is the more appropriate caregiver for Michael. Um, that she's going to continue to help with his development uh, and continue to provide a loving home for him. Uh, unfortunately, I do believe that there's going to be some issues with this uh, relationship after today's hearing. The things that. Is that is, okay? Did you say is that it, Mr. Sturmer? Yes, Your ma'am. Okay, thank you, Miss Cummings. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, I don't believe the department has met the burden of proof to grant conservatorship to another person. They have not presented a preponderance of evidence that these parents are not capable of meeting the needs of the, this child. They have worked their services. They have made lifestyle changes. Uh, Ms. Miller's ambulatory issues on her own, she has been exercising, losing weight, and getting to the point to where she is not fully dependent on her walker. Um, Mr. Chapman or Dr. Chapman has researched schools to meet Michael's needs, to find care 24 seven, um, to find year round schooling. I mean, these parents have done everything above and beyond. Um, and if anything, I mean, the parents have or should be appointed as a managing conservatorship because there is no evidence presented that appointment of them as managing conservators would significantly impair the child's physical health or emotional development. These parents have done everything. And if anything, the department has failed in their due diligence of monitoring the case and putting things in place and helping these parents to get their child back. So we would ask that the court dismiss this case, return Michael Jr. home with his family. And if the department want, or I'm sorry, if the court would like to have a monitor, I mean, having Miss Bragg as a possessory conservator, if that's what she wishes, and then she can keep an eye on Michael during, you know, monthly visits. But other than that, these parents have done everything and they deserve to have their child back in their home. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Gunn. Mr. Glass. The Chapmans and Ms. Rag, I think, obviously have different parenting styles. Doesn't mean that either side is wrong. Doesn't mean that either style is wrong or different. We have a special needs child. He was three when he was removed. No, he wasn't potty trained. He's special needs. Which takes me to my next point, Judge. I'm tired of arguing about chicken nuggets. I've heard it at every hearing we've had. I think it goes directly to the heart of the department has failed to meet its burden. All we can talk about are chicken nuggets. They've done what they're supposed to do. Mr. Sturmer says, well, they checked a block. She's a doctor, works full time. She's got mobility issues. It's not the easiest thing to get around and do these, these services when you're not employed. Uh, I, I 
can't believe some of the families that we return children to. I've got two cases right now on your docket that are callbacks. Uh, we've given the children back and either the parents become pregnant again and had another meth baby or another case. They've left the state and now the, the, the child's out of state and there's a whole bunch of problems and mom and dad can't keep putting hands on each other and the department's back involved. None of that is going to happen with these people. We're afraid that their house is too cluttered and that little Michael is going to be chicken nuggets and yogurt. I think that's the sum of the state's argument. And I'm just tired. Uh, I'd ask that you uh, uh, appoint the Chapmans as managing conservators. And yeah, Ms. Rags developed a bond with this little boy. She's a wonderful lady. I have no problem. I don't think the Chapmans would have a problem with you giving her some sort of appointment or some sort of position, possessory conservator. And she gets to, to, to spend time with Michael. He's special. He needs as many people in this as he can get. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Glass. Ms. Mystic. I'm trying with the video on. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Um, Judge, I think we need more time in this case. Um, there is no doubt this couple, they are the parents and they love this, this, this little boy. Um, the big concern is I can't imagine where this little guy would be had the department not intervened. Were there mistakes made by everybody? Absolutely. But that's that's not where we are today. Where we are today is that I would have liked to have seen and we've talked about this, like Mr. Glass said about chicken. Nugget, we've talked about them getting help in the home, um, going to things for the school. If you're the parent, um, and I think Mr. Sturmer may have asked this, why aren't you? If, if, if they feel like the department didn't need to do what they needed to do, then why weren't they beating down the door of is he having arts? Is he what school? Can I go to these things? Um, I remember Ms. Rack's testimony from the last hearing, and she is probably one of the most true people I've heard because it would have been very easy for her. You hear these attorneys say, why this is about money. And what I heard Ms. Rack from the last hearing was almost to the point, I think he'd be fine over there. Boy, today she is in this for the money, and I further the furthest from the truth. But I do believe that some improvement um but i would ask that um the department stay in we can't do a monitored return just do joint with all three department this rag the chapman's um it'll be easy to do a modification let's see how the summer goes let's see if they get what they say they're going to do because i absolutely understand they can't hire someone to come in and help with michael because he hasn't been in the home but let's do a week or two, you know a day or two during the week and do some increased times as whatever the court decides or we can work out. And it's a simple, it really is a modification. I think we could all get there if we see the trajectory of he is safe. I admire Miss Miller. She, she admitted she knew at the time she felt horrible when they knew about that birthday party. She felt terrible that they didn't get a gift or go. Um, I'm concerned in hearing that they're calling this caregiver a liar. Um, and I believe what Mr. Sturmer said, I don't know where it's going to be from here based on what they've said about her, but I think that all of these folks want to put this child first. I think we can get there for this little guy coming home, but I think we need to see more where they have more time, maybe of unsupervised and make sure they do the things like you ordered them to do a few months ago. And I think costs would be a good fit on this case. I think that, um, that might be a plus as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank y'all. Um, y'all, this is a, 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 a kind of like Mr. Glass said, this is a different kind of case. It's, it's a complicated case. A whole, uh, it's been an interesting case. Um, I, I'm not going to make a ruling right now. I got to go back and read all my notes. I mean, we had hearing on 329. We had a couple witnesses that day. I'm going to go back and read that testimony. Um, I, too, well, I'm t I, Mr. Glass, I keep quoting Mr. Glass, uh, and don't ask me why, but, um, you know, I'm kind of tired of this hanging over my head too, as I know everybody else is. Um, I had planned for the whole day. I will tell y'all, I will study this, read my notes. I will give y'all a ruling by the end of the afternoon. So everybody be watching their emails. Okay. Okay. Thank y'all. We'll be in recess. Ms. Mystic, safe trip. Ms. Rag, thank, thank y'all.